diagnosed with stab wounds to the chest, is in hospital. In the past hour, Detective Chief Inspector Bruno Asnikar said what had happened was extremely distressing. I just walked onto the scene, but I can say this. Uh, as it stands at the moment, uh, there's no need for the public to be concerned uh, about this, other than the fact that it's a tragic, tragic event. Uh, the situation is well controlled at the moment. There no, shouldn't be any concern for anyone else out of this environment. And uh, as we progress further, we'll be um, sharing the results of our investigation. Women in the armed forces could be allowed to serve in frontline combat roles for the first time by 2016. Military sources have told BBC News that there's a real desire to end the current ban. An aggressive beggar in Watford has been jailed after breaching a two-year antisocial behaviour order to stop him from entering the town centre. Timothy Hart of St Albans Road was given the order at Stevenage Magistrates Court after a series of incidents which led to the police and the town's community safety team taking action to protect the public. With more details, here's Ewan Duncan. 35-year-old Timothy Hart breached an antisocial behaviour order by returning to Watford Town Centre almost immediately after it was issued. Hertfordshire police say he'd been arrested previously for several public order and criminal damage offences. These included verbal abuse by cash machines, intimidating women and girls walking past him and for indecent acts, including defecating in public. The order bars him from entering Watford Town Centre and from begging in England and Wales, while he's also prevented from obstructing council officers in their duties. Thames Valley Police has arrested 117 people for drink driving in the first two weeks of December. 44 of the arrests were in Buckinghamshire. The force is warning people to not drive when over the limit and they say they will be breathalysing people during the rest of this month, both at night time and in the morning when people may be travelling into work after a night out. And the weather, the rain will clear away this morning to leave a dry day with some good sunny spells through the day. Top temperatures of 8 Celsius, that's 46 in Fahrenheit. Looking ahead to this weekend, it'll be a mainly dry weekend with some good sunny spells. Get the latest news and sport online at bbc.co.uk slash three counties. Opening the doors on the biggest advent calendar in beds, hearts and bucks. Let's see who's behind door number 19. Tony Blackburn. I think probably my favourite Christmas memory was when I was with my grandparents. I'm higher than Tony Blackburn! I'm higher than Tony Blackburn! Assuming they've not forgotten to put you in. No, 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 no! He's going to tell us about a really old Christmas. <laughs> uh, my favourite Christmas was, uh, was before... the very first one ever. <laughs> <laughs> I was in Worthing in Sussex uh, with my mum and dad and we used to go there and spend Christmas with them. And uh, I think it was the present I had, to be honest with you. I remember it was a bike, my very first uh, two-wheeler bike. And I remember uh, getting it, going out onto the road and falling off it. He doesn't remember what day it is, let alone what his favourite Christmas was. It was a penny farthing. <laughs> <laughs> Bikes were only two years old at that point. Hello, and I'm Fabian Oxley from, from the news. And I wish you a reggae Christmas and a reggae New Year. Morning, folks. No, Come on, go. guys. Here we go. This is it. Oh, we wish you a reggae Christmas. We wish you a reggae Christmas. We wish you a reggae Christmas and a reggae New Year. Oh, reggae. Mate, nice grinding. Thank you. He was little... doing a dirty wine. <laughs> Guys, I don't know if you can tell, but we have all smoke, smoked copious amounts of marijuana this no. morning. No, we haven't. Of course we haven't. We've just done acid. No, no we haven't. Now. No. We haven't done anything. We're just coffee. high on life and oh, coffee. That's it. We're high on caffeine. Um, and I've my, had a Barocca. Yes, we had a Barocca. Kelly Betts is there. Hello, I am here. Catherine Boyle is there. Word. I'm here. We're all a little bit excited because tonight's the Three Counties Radio Christmas party. Woo! And yesterday we had the um, breakfast show core group lunch at Nandos. And f- 
And yes, it was fun. And I've never had a warmer welcome. <laughs> Boy, did those guys make us feel welcome for walk- walking through the door. Thank you so much, Landos. <laughs> it was a peri peri welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Lots on the show this morning, but what the uh, the main thing we're excited about is Justin Dealey's serial killer profiles. Across That's the main thing. Bucks. This is BBC Three Counties Radio. I mean, what could be more festive? <laughs> it's about a poisoner. Now... This is a feature that was suggested by Scott Balcony, regular contributor to the show via um, uh, tweets. Justin has gone out and has recorded, well, we thought, naively, it would be a light-hearted package, a light-hearted look at um, serial murders through history. He's interviewed a copper. Can you look at that lightly? Well, mm. Justin could. Um, he's told me that we're going to be impressed. Wow. <laughs> It was often talked about It was often raised But nothing was ever done about it To hear the way they talked about it No one could be seen But nothing was ever done about it Shall I take back everything I've ever said And live my whole life in silence instead It was oversimplified It was underthought Nothing was ever done to stop it Everything was fortified All the lies we bought Nothing was ever done to stop it Shall I take back Everything I've ever said And live my whole life inside Mistrust, we never discussed anyone's reservations. Shall I?
a tune. Here's what I'm going to do for everyone I work with. I'm making you a Bare Naked Ladies mixtape. Everybody. And you're going to... No, exactly. And that's the noise that you'll make. And then you put it on, like, three months later in the car, because you're bored, and you go, oh, fair play. Yeah, nice. I like them. Yeah. I'll give it a listen. Yeah, fair play. Fair, fair play. play. Yeah. Fair play. Yeah, fair play. I like them. Yeah. Yeah, fair play. I like them. Fair play. Now, the NHS is stealing itself for one of the busiest nights of its year. Some people, probably Americans, are calling it Black Friday. Well, I don't think the Americans are caught because the, the American Black Friday is the shopping one. This is the British Black Friday. Where everyone gets, gets boozed up and um, uh, goes and has a punch-up and stuff. And I, I'm worried that we're going to start doing with Black Fridays what we did with billions. And we're going to adopt... Because we, we, don't, we don't use the British billion anymore. We use the American billion. I think the American billion is 100 million. No, 1,000 million. The British billion is a million million, right? But we now say a billion, and we mean a thousand million. Anyway, ambulances. So it's going to put extra strain on an already stretched ambulance service. Here's what happened when our reporter, Sophie Solaria, went out on a night shift with paramedics Nick Currington and Becca Tolhurst last weekend. Our jobs are constant. We come here, we offload at the hospital... We green up, which means we're clear to get another job, and we get another job. We could be here, and we get control call us on the radio, asking us how long we got to be because we've got jobs stacking. We need to get you out on the road. Yeah, the pressure's definitely there. OK, so um, first job is um, a patient that's had a termination today, and she's got a PV bleed. It's a hot two, so that means that um, we're going on blue lights to the patient to transport them to hospital. OK, legs up, please. Oh. You're going to pop a needle in your arm. OK, guys, it's now ten past nine and we've just finished our first job. So why do you think it took so long to have to sort that one out? Um, the problem we had here was that the, it was a bit of a language barrier. So what we had there was that the communication between us and the family and it was, it was quite sort of hit and miss. I don't know, it, it, it just really drew the whole job out to quite, a, quite an extent, really. We just have to be sort of quite sort of forceful with these family, especially when we need to get on with the job and, uh, and just get on with it and ask them to get out of the way. But, yeah, it's, it, was, it was quite stressful. What's your workload been like over the past year? Our workload is, is, is sort of steadily over the years is increasing. And the demands put on the ambulance service is is quite severe. Um, I do believe that there are other avenues that people could use rather than the ambulance service. The ambulance service is for life-threatening conditions and not the things like I've got a cold, I've got a headache, which is what quite a few calls we get called to. It's quite bad. It's, 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 it should be better. Yeah, the pressure's definitely there constant throughout the year. Of course the East of Ambulance Service has been criticised over the years for waiting times. What's that like on the coalface to feel criticised like that? We are going to do the best we can do and we can't do any more than that. We only have a certain amount of resources. To be criticised for it, I, I think if the boot was on the other foot, yeah I'd think I'd be criticising as well, but we could do one patient at any one time. We do the best we can for that patient and take them to the hospital. Uh, we can't do no more than that. We can't do any more. How's staff morale? Better than it has been. I mean, staff morale really did hit a rock bottom uh, not so long ago, especially with the press really putting us down, not having enough vehicles, enough staff. But that's changed. That's changed dramatically at Luton. We've, we're, we're coming up to being fully manned. We've got loads of brand new equipment brand new ambulances um this year it's yeah yeah we're on the up and we're fighting back in a big way travel news for beds hearts and bugs bbc three counties radio well, thankfully, most of the major routes are looking pretty good at the moment. The M1 and the M25 trouble-free so far. M11's got a lane closed on the northbound exit at Junction 8 to turn for the A120 in the Bishop Stortford. It's for barrier repairs after they were damaged in an accident earlier on. Got that ongoing work on the A6 along Paula Radcliffe Way at Clapham as well. So a lane closure each way delays possible as we head further in towards the morning rush. And uh, trains seem OK. As far as I can see, no delays or cancellations showing on our local departure boards. Russell Holding, BBC Three Counties Radio. Thank you, Russell. 
if you're having trouble on the Thames link this morning, could you give us a call? We've had one tweet from uh, someone telling us that they, uh, they're they struggling, from Paolo. Um, and we're going to be talking, by coincidence, we're going to be talking a- a- about it, what, about 10 to 8? Yeah, do you remember James Montgomery gave yep. a shout about two weeks ago and said yep. he'd keep us up to date? He said it's, things have got worse since then. Yeah, and it's funny that Paolo tweets about it today. If you're struggling on the Thames link, do, do uh, send us a text, 81333, start your text 3CR, or maybe give us a call, 08459 four double five five double five in the meantime it's 6 16 it's friday the 19th of december and i'm actually starting to feel a bit christmasy at last these are your headlines on bbc three counties radio Workers at the East of England Ambulance Service are gearing up for some of their busiest days of the year and eight children have been found stabbed to death in a house in Cairns in Australia. Dear, there's a, a morbid picture to paint first in the morning. 08459 four double five five double five. BBC Three Counties Radio. If you've missed any of the programmes from the last week, you've missed things like this. You are an absolute disgrace, and I think you should be ashamed, ashamed of the opinions that you hold and the things you do. But there is a way you can hear it all again. This is your own words. Would you promote homosexuality if that child wanted to be gay? And I said no. bbc.co.uk slash three counties radio, allowing you to listen to what you missed. Children know that killing a baby is wrong. The JVS Show. I don't mean to be rude, Andy, but I would have great concerns when you spend most of your life standing outside abortion clinics being nasty to women who are making perhaps the most difficult decision they've ever had to make. bbc.co.uk slash three counties radio. Hello, I'm the political reporter Paul Scoring. I like council meetings and stuff. And I tell massive things. Believe me, ladies and gentlemen, when I wish you a very reggae Christmas and a reggae New Year. We're coming to the station now, but don't get off that train. This is where she broke your heart, and this town bought you pain. Stay on. Time it's just around the bend, and then this train is gonna stop. Don't you move, just keep your seat now. Don't get off that train. She left you for someone else here, then the heartache came. Stay on, it's almost time, it's just around the bend, and then. You know you can never return to the love that you once knew Cause she won't be on the platform waiting for you Like she used to do We're slowing up along the track Now don't get off that train Here's the town, now don't turn back You'll cry if you remain Stay on, you know she's gone So don't get off that train Stay on, and soon the pain will stop Tony Blackburn. Merry Christmas, Tony. Now, a beggar's been jailed after breaching an ASBO which was supposed to stop him hassling people in Watford. Timothy Hart from St Albans Road had been reported for pressurising people at cash points, intimidating female passers-by and doing his toilet in public. He was told to stay out of the town centre. He didn't. And now he's in prison. Well, Catherine Boyle's got some background for us. Uh, What more do we know, Kath? Well... 
This all centres around the behaviour of a 35-year-old man by the name, as you say, of Timothy Hart. And he'd been handing an ASBO as a result of the way he was pestering people for money at outside cash points, his behaviour towards women, as you said, and uh, his less than subtle approach to relieving himself when yeah. the need arose. He was doing both toilets outside. He was, streets, yeah. he was. And he's been arrested in the past for public order and criminal damage offences. So when he was given the ASBO banning him from the town centre, it was hoped that this might put a stop to it. No, he went straight back into the town centre. OK, what else was the ASBO supposed to do? It wasn't just that, was it? No, as well as keeping him out of the town centre of Watford. He's also banned from begging in England and Wales. Oh. It's also supposed to prevent him from obstructing council officers in their duties, going to the toilet in public, spitting or displaying open wounds. Sorry? Yeah. Ouch. He can only go into Watford for medical appointments of pre-arranged probation visits. Uh, what have the police said about this case? Well, they say that they responded to a number of complaints about Mr Hart's behaviour in Watford Town Centre and although they tried to offer him advice and support, he wasn't interested. So they applied for the anti-social behaviour order, which he's working alongside the Borough Council. The local council described the ASBO as their very last option. Now, according to Liam Fitzgerald, who's from the council's community safety che- team, Mr Hart was offered treatment and help before the court proceedings and, again, he wasn't interested. Uh, What's going to happen in the long term, do we think? Well, the onus is now on Mr Hart, according to the authorities. Um, Liam Fitzgerald wants Mr Hart to consider getting some help. He says there are plenty of organisations which could could offer guidance and support for him. He just needs to take those opportunities. Now, unfortunately, we can't have this conversation with Hertfordshire Police or with Watford Borough Council because they're not available to comment. Uh. Hertfordshire Police say that they are just not not available and a spokeswoman for Watford Borough Council said the police took the lead on the issue so it's appropriate that they should talk about it and not the council. So um, is he getting any... He, he's obviously unwell. Mm. I, I make up he's unwell. Is he getting it? Do we know if he's getting any help, if he's getting... Keeps turning it down. Right, and so they can't force it on him. No, and this reminds me of the, this story of the woman in Wendover Woods, where if she does not go oh, for help... Oh, remember that? Yes, this is the one where a um, woman lives in Wendover Woods and has done possibly for years. Yes, yeah, they keep finding her asleep in the bin sheds and well, going through the, the bins. We spoke to the very nice cafe owners who were, were very concerned about her. Well, they've started putting food yeah. out for her, haven't they, so to yeah. stop her going in the bins, and they've put um, clothes out for her too. And actually, I noticed some uh, another story of a, a former soldier who'd managed to get himself straight, and he said he'd been living in the bin sheds at that cafe in the woods as well. Blimey. But the thing is, I think that the authorities find that their hands are tied if someone will not accept or, or elicit help. Banning... Uh, well. It's such a, this is such a complicated one. Banning people from towns, it's like what they used to do in the 1800s, isn't it? Is they would they would uh, you know kick poor people beggars out of towns, and they just go, and, and the problem would move elsewhere. Yeah. Yeah. Really, it doesn't get solved; it just gets moved on. No, but at, but at the same time, the people of Watford shouldn't have to put up with that kind of. Oh, behavior. if he's doing his toilet in um, the street, then that's that's highly inappropriate well, and, and harass- showing harassing women and e- exposing his wounds. Mm. It's, it's um, I'd love your thoughts on this. There will be some of you listening, I'd imagine. And you think, ah, chuck him in prison. Chuck the nutter in prison. I suspect we might have another situation where, because he's breached this banning order straight away, yeah. he's a bed for the night, isn't it? Yeah. That was suggested yesterday when we were talking about another homeless man who'd committed a crime. £2.50 T-shirt he'd stolen. Oh eight four five nine four double five five double five is the telephone number if you want to give us a call. I'm Peter. not going down the reggae route. <laughs> find ourselves going down the reggae route, however much we uh, we attempt not to go down the reggae route. Is this route. reggae? Is this a bit more dub or calypso? Oh. Hang on a minute. This this might be reggae. Hang on a minute. Let's try this one. Here we go. Here we go. Cha- we cha- we cha- here we go. There we go. Oh, this is reggae.
original version of We Three Kings. Odd. Really odd name for a band. Good name. Excellent name. Excellent, but, but really odd. Travel news for beds, cards and bugs. BBC Three Counties Radio. This reminded me of the guys that used to play the piano and sing on the Jonathan Ross show. They had an unusual kind of similar name, didn't they? Now, on the M25, uh, there's a lane closed anti-clockwise, junctions 24 to 23 from Potter's Bar to the A1 at South Mims, where there's been an accident, so I'm expecting delays to build up fairly soon. They've got a lane closed on the M11 as well, on the northbound exit at junction 8 at Bishop Stortford, where the barrier repairs are going on after an accident earlier on. The accident actually was yesterday afternoon. And the speed sensor's picking up a queue on Airport Way, just coming into to uh, Luton Airport, so that's starting to look very, very busy according to the speed sensors. Still can't find too much going on on the trains. I don't know if you had any calls about uh, Thameslink. Did spot that there was one cancelled train that should have left a couple of minutes ago from Stevenage into Moorgate. The 6.25 uh, got cancelled, but nothing more than minor delays anywhere else. Russell Holding, BBC Three Counties Radio. Across beds, hearts and bugs. This is BBC Three Counties Radio. It's half past six with the headlines. I'm Barry Caffrey. East of England ambulance service workers are gearing up for one of their busiest days of the year. Today is known as Black Friday, the Friday before Christmas, when more people drink to excess as the party season reaches a peak. Eight children have been found stabbed to death in a house in Cairns in Australia. Police said the victims were between 18 months and 15 years old. An aggressive beggar in Watford has been jailed after breaching a two-year antisocial behaviour order to stop him from entering the town centre. Timothy Hart was given the order after a series of incidents which led to police taking action to protect the public. Thames Valley Police has arrested 117 people so far for drink driving. In the first two weeks of December, 44 of the arrests were in Buckinghamshire. The force is warning people not to drive when over the limit. And the weather, the rain will clear away this morning to leave a dry day with some good sunny spells and highs of 8 Celsius. That's 46 in Fahrenheit. Looking ahead to this weekend, it'll be a mainly dry weekend with some good sunny spells. Three Counties Sports. BBC Three Counties Radio. Watford are likely to field a similar team to last week as they head to Reading in the Championship tomorrow. The Hornets will come up against opposition who have just appointed Steve Clark as manager. Not at an ideal time to play them, according to Watford boss Slavisa Djukanovic. Really, it's not good news for, for us always uh, where, uh, after this change, especially first uh, first game, it's uh, in Spain, say, new, new coach, new win. I expect it's not going to happen like uh, like this, but the uh, level of the attention of uh, Reading going to be in the highest possible level. MK Dons will be without the injured Ben Reeves again as they take on Oldham in League One. Luton Town have skipper Steve McNulty back from suspension for tomorrow's visit of Newport in League Two. Ahead of Christmas next week, manager John Still has been discussing whether his players will get more time off. Day off? No, when do we get a day off then? Monday or Tuesday? Why? No day off. Day off Sunday. No day off Sunday. There'd be a you know, normal time off for recovery. But by and large, nothing changes. Stevenage could be without the services of Charlie Lee and Darius Charles for the League One game against Exeter tomorrow. Borough have been hit hard with injuries this season, but manager Graham Wesley will now be looking for players in the January transfer window. What we're looking for is to actually get some stability. Um, Stability is a massive thing in football. Uh, you look at the years when we've had success, it's not been about bringing loads and loads of players in, it's been about developing the players that we've got, bringing those players along. And you know, They don't need to play in constant fear of their places, they need to know that they're believed in and they need to know that uh, you know, their development is top of our priority list. We've got some good players here. Wickham Wanderers head to Accrington Stanley, aiming to preserve their lead at the top of League Two. Liverpool striker Mario Balotelli has apologised after the Football Association banned him for one match for posting an anti-Semitic picture which contained racist references on social media. Balotelli, who also received a £25,000 fine and must attend an education course, says he regrets the post and vowed to make sure it never happens again. 
And away from football, the England cricket selectors are due to meet today to decide on a 16-man squad for next month's tri-series against Australia and India. The squad, which will be announced tomorrow morning, may not include Captain Alistair Cook after he admitted that he would have no complaints if he is stood down following four straight series defeats under his leadership. BBC Three Counties Radio News and Sport. I'll be back with a full bulletin at seven. Call 08459 455 Now, slightly different um, uh, setup for this morning's show. Oh, by the way, if you're having any problems on Thameslink trains, we've been tweeted by Paolo, who says, Ian, can you announce the fiasco that is Thameslink this morning? Delays and cancellations, your listeners need to know. By pure coincidence, we've got a fella coming on at 10 to 8 to um, talk about how he thinks things have got worse in Thameslink over the last couple of weeks. And when we spoke to him two weeks ago, they were pretty bad then. Yeah, and the suggestion is that Christmas means that there are even fewer drivers than there were before and there weren't enough before. So if you're struggling... Oh, you did a really serious voice then. <clears throat> Uh, 08459 four double five five double five or text 81333 start your text 3CR but uh, because it's Christmas we're doing some special stuff uh, special stuff there next week but certainly special stuff today uh, and the first of those special things indeed the only uh, of those special things today is Justin Dealey's serial killer profiles and we're going to be doing that in a few minutes so my suggestion is Catherine we play a song we get Dealey up and we listen to um, what he's got for us it's exactly what I was thinking thanks <laughs>
What did he have around his neck? Costly piece of jewellery. Flip it, Nick. Mm-hmm. Oh, he died from an overdose of joy. Well, boy, oh boy, haven't we been close to that at the times? Morning, Justin. Hey, good morning, boss. You enjoying this? Oh, do you know what? Is this Eugene Records? It is, yeah. Oh, from the Shy Lights, yeah. Hey, Justin. Hmm. Um, Catherine bought a record player recently. Arrived, arrived yesterday, is that correct? Day before. Day before yesterday. Now, I, I, there's, apparently there's a record shop in Luton. Do you know where this is? Yes, I'll tell you where it is. Yeah. Um, we were at Nando's yesterday. Yep. It's about 30 seconds from oh. Nando's. Beautiful. That was only galaxy. 30 seconds. <laughs> from Nando's. Uh, we're going to go record shopping after the show if you want to come. Oh, I would love to. Beautiful. But, uh, I get a oh. little bit um, excited. As long as you bear that in mind, uh, so going into an old record shop, yeah. just going in there and going... Oh, the smell. That is the oh. best smell in the world. Mate, I, mate when, I, when I go into a record shop, I take my pants off. Seriously, <laughs> I love it so much. OK, I might want to go on my own. No, come no, with us. No, come on. Kels, you coming? Yeah, man. All righty. Now, Justin, yeah. what I need to do now is I need to lower the tone of my voice, slow my voice down, because we've gone from something very exciting and very joyous, mm. and we're moving on to something uh, actually very Serious. I've just realised I've gone into my sarcastic voice, so I just need to go back up a bit. Mm -hmm. There we go. That's the tone and that's the speed. Mm. What have we got now, Just? Well, last week on the programme, um, we got talking about serial killers uh, because it was was my thought that there was a a serial killer on the loose in Welling Garden City, um, somebody that was was killing deer there. This was because of the the deer that had been found. You thought it was a serial killer. Um, Remind me to tell you about ants later on today, but yes. Yeah, I mean, I went to our carol service last night and three people said, to me, they came up to me saying, I'm with you on this one. I believe it's a person in Welling Garden City yeah. who's well, killing is, the deer. It's a poacher. Can, can mm. we just say for everyone, all the children that are now terrified that live mm. in Welling Garden City, there's not a serial killer running around. It's Justin no. Dealey's no. own, it's, it's his own theory. We haven't got proof to say is it, if it's a poacher, if it's a person doing this. Either way, what was going it's on there wasn't pleasant. A, it's definitely a person. We, we mm. have mm. proof that it's a person. Yeah. That, that's be, a fact. It could be a chupacabra. Mm. Lots of rumours going around there. Um, so, we got talking about serial killers, and uh, one of your listeners, Scott, phoned in to say, I think it would be fantastic if Dealey was to do a, a serial killer profile. Yeah, so he tweeted. We, yeah, we are going to be doing that feature. Um, you may think to yourself, why does it sound different? I'm not on the streets. I'm actually in a, a new office. The BBC have given me the serial killer office here. Um, I've got the office around me. Everything is there for, for research, and what I need to produce these features. So, what today... Can you see, what can you see in the the office, Justin. Um, I can see research. a computer. I can see various telephones here as well. Um, everything that I need to come up with the goods for you, basically. That's all. And th- those are your research tools: are yep. Google and <laughs> phones. Wikipedia. And microphones. Okay, great. And a Woody as well. I've got my Wood here with me. Everything is in this room. So, our first serial killer profile is somebody called Graham Young. Now, the reason I chose Graham Young is because you wanted these to be local. Yeah. Graham Young lived in my town, Hemel Hempstead. And it's a story which still terrifies a lot of people today. So, here is our first profile on Graham Young. Often hey, described... how, how, many, how many profiles on Graham Young are you going to be doing? Okay, one. Okay, sorry, this is, this is our first profile. This is our Gra- first profile. Okay. This, is the, this is the chap that you thought had been given a poison kit for Christmas by his parents. He was given a chemical set. Chemistry, let's call it that. Okay, he was given a chemistry set, which got him into chemicals, and of course he used those powers to, to kill three people. He was often described as a genius gone wrong. Here is our first serial killer Profile on Graham Young. Come on and be my little, good luck charm. Elvis Presley, Good Luck Charm, the UK's number one on the 23rd of May, 1962. Well, no such good luck charm when it comes to serial killer Graham Young. This was the day that he was arrested at just 14 years old and confessed to killing his stepmother with homemade poisons. He was sent to Broadmoor Prison. Well, in 1971, he was released and given the job of quartermaster at John Hadland Laboratories in Bovingdon, where, incredibly, he was trusted to make the tea for staff in exactly the same way he killed his stepmother. Over a period of time, many members of staff became severely ill and two people died. 
Originally, these illnesses were put down to bad water in the area until police started digging deeper into staff profiles and Young became the chief suspect based on his previous crime. Wendy Parry was a detective constable at Hertfordshire Police and was one of the first people to work on the case. Here, talking exclusively to us, she describes the scene where she went to Young's bedroom in Hemel Hempstead to gather evidence. In his smallish bedroom, um, the walls were covered with all sorts of um, pictures of Hitler and Nazi leaders. The room had a number of bottles and files all over the place, um, and there was a diary, and the diary gave a sort of log of what he had actually administered to various people at the factory. Well, a scene of pure evil. She then interviewed all the staff who had been ill and the widows of the two people killed. Here are just some of the symptoms that people suffered with. Well, a number of them had been very sick. They'd had diarrhoea, nausea, numbness in the fingers. One or two of them had had pneumonia. Hair fell out of the men and uh, the doctor described them really as being looking like plucked chickens. Graham Young represented himself at his trial and was found guilty of all charges. On the 29th of June 1972, he received four life sentences. He died at Parkhurst Prison on the Isle of Wight in the summer of 1990. Graham Young was often described as a genius gone wrong. He could have been the UK's leading toxicologist. Instead, he used his powers to kill three people. There you go. Serial killer profile number one. Nice little bit of echo on the voice there. Did you record that in the back stairs? No, I recorded this um, in my new office, as I mentioned to you. It's got all sorts of things here. The the serial killer profile office. Um, it's got a sound effect machine as well. Everything would, I need to, to come appear, up with this stuff. It would appear that in your office you have a sound effect machine, yep. computer, a telephone, <laughs> and the Guinness Book of Hit singles. Yeah. <laughs> yes, it's in there as well. But clearly, you know, a terrifying story. When you asked me to, to come up with this feature, I can't really do anything more than give you the facts as I've just given you there two and a half minutes on a man that was quite simply pure evil travel news for beds hearts and bugs BBC Three Counties Radio the lane closed on the M25 anti-clockwise in between junctions 24 and 23, the bit from Potter's Bar to the A1 at South Mim. So an accident causing delays, looking very slow now uh, towards and past the scene on the speed sensors here. Also beginning to build up a little bit anti-clockwise around junction 20 at Kings Langley and 16, the M40. Now on the M11, there's a lane closed on the northbound exit slip road at junction 8 at Bishop Stortford. They're doing barrier repairs after they were damaged in an accident yesterday afternoon. Doesn't look, from looking at the speed sensors, like it's causing... Uh, too much trouble. In fact, they're not picking up many other delays. It was looking a little bit busy for a while earlier going on Airport Way into Luton Airport. Looks like that's eased a bit. Centre of Harpenden and looking rather busy by the looks of things. Russell Holding, BBC Three Counties Radio. Thank you, Russell. 646, Friday the 19th of December. I'm Ian Lee. These are your headlines on BBC Three Counties Radio. Today is one of the busiest days of the year for the East of England Ambulance Service when many people drink to excess ahead of the Christmas break. And police in Australia say eight children have been found dead at a house in the city of Cairns near uh, in northern Queensland. Coming up, your phone calls 08459 455 555. Uh, you can also text as well, particularly if you're having problems on Thames Link this morning, 81333. Start your text 3CR or you could send me a cheeky email. Yes, I'm filling for time while we get the weather up. Ian.lee at BBC. .co.uk. Let's get the weather. Beds, hearts and bucks weather. BBC Three Counties Radio. Hello there. Well, we've got a really pleasant day ahead of us today once this rain and cloud clears, which should happen fairly early on this morning. And then we're not just talking sunny spells, but crystal blue skies, so plenty of sunshine around. Um, lighter winds as well. Temperatures reaching about 10 or 11 degrees Celsius, but we actually get to those highs this morning and then it becomes progressively cooler throughout the day. <coughs> Excuse me. Hey! <laughs> That's a bit of apple. Um, a clear, cool night tonight. Uh, cloudier in the early hours of the morning with loads of four degrees and plenty of sunny spells around for tomorrow. It should stay dry. What the hell is going on with you, woman? (laughs) Come on, focus. This is important. 
<laughs> a touch more breezy with highs of 8 degrees Celsius. A touch of frost in the evening and then becoming much more cloudy but milder from Sunday through to the beginning of next week. And uh, lots of spots of drizzle around. I'm terribly sorry. That was very unprofessional. Wasn't it? But let's, let's hope in the next hour you've, you've pulled your <laughs> socks up, young lady. Thank you very much. Opening the doors on the biggest advent calendar in beds, hearts and bucks. Oh, oh, oh. Let's see who's behind door number 17. Hello, I'm Paul Scoynes, the political reporter. I suppose my favourite Christmas memory is back from the early 80s when I was a few years old. And uh, it was one of those Christmases where it used to snow. We'd been given sledges, my brother and I, for Christmas. And uh, we went to Campbell Park in Milton Keynes and spent the mornings going up and down. And it was just a lovely morning spent with our brand new sledges. Building up to Christmas, only eight days to go with BBC Three Counties Radio. song. BBC Introduction. Who's this, girls? I like this. Her name is Hope and she's 15 years old. She's what? 15. Hang on, hang on. A bit more of this then. Oh, I hate talented children. She wouldn't consider herself a child. She'd consider herself a grown woman. 15 years old? She's 15. She's from St Albans and this week uh, her first ever EP was released and it's called Acoustic EP. Wowzers. And if you just type in Hope Music, I think You'll, you'll find it. Thank you, uh, Kelly. I like that. 15 years old, Catherine. What were you doing when you were 15? Uh, Smoking tabs and drinking uh, two dogs? No, my homework. Probably. Uh, it's the 19th today, not the 17th, so you need to open number 19 on the calendar, says uh, Murph. Wow. Probably Catherine, who made the cock up. He don't like you. He's got beef with you. I don't like him very much. Speaking of beef, Mary's from Hendon. Good morning, Mary. Hi, good morning. Well, you've called in about Thameslink, have you? What's going on? I'm really, I'm really, really angry. Ever since they took over, I've noticed in September the trains are brutal. I'm a teacher in Luton. Um, yesterday, the 628 train, I just missed it. Then the next one, the 64, was cancelled. I came down to West Town, so I paid £5 to go up, which I've been doing now for weeks and weeks. I've come down, make the 628 train this morning, it's cancelled. The next one, 654, is cancelled. Oh. I've come down here to West Hampstead, and the 642 is um, over 20 minutes late. 
and so are others, and they're saying we're sorry for the cancellations. Um, when I went to the man in the office, in Hendon, I said, what's going on? Why are all these cancellations? And the, he, he was blaming First Capital Connect. They're all gone on holidays. It's something to do with the holiday rota. Now, for the last two weekends, I've had late train, trains late from the depot. We've had cancellations because there's no driver available. It is, it is beyond belief the amount of money you pay for your transport here. And they just simply put up things like we've got no driver available. To have two trains so early in the morning cancelled, flashing rain out, there's no comfort in any of these stations. Everybody else has to work. And when we get down here and we pay extra money, these trains are, are delayed. And it's a constant, an absolute constant. I don't know how they're getting away with it. So what time is it looking like you're getting to work today, Mary? I don't know. I started out, you know, 40 minutes ago, and I'm still here not getting to Luton. I'm in West Hampstead. And when even they even say the times, and they say it's 22 minutes down, 21 minutes down, 20 minutes down, it never comes. And they put this due up, and it still might be um, one minute late, even though it says it's going, to be, it's going to be due. It's an absolute nightmare. And they have nothing but ticket inspectors who can immediately penalise you on a train. But when you have all these problems with delays and cancellations, you've got to write letters, you've got to send in tickets. You don't have an immediate recompense. It's an absolute... You cannot rely on the public transport now. It's as though they want everyone to go back into cars. Mary, I can, I can tell you're, you're, you're furious and upset at this. I'm and, frustrated. Yeah. It's, not, it's not an easy journey when you come out. No. You go through a nightmare beforehand, and apologies now are, are just not good enough. And they say you can get your ticket on, on East Midland, but that doesn't stop at West Hampstead. You have to go all the way into King's Cross or somewhere. It's, uh, it's, it's just simply not good and enough. Would you say it's got worse in the last few weeks, Mary? I've noticed it since, since September. Right. And I eventually asked, I asked about four weeks ago, why is the problem like that? And it's been changed over to Thameslink. It wasn't great beforehand, but it's absolutely worse now. And if this is the case that drivers have been given their holidays all at the same time, I don't understand how any train company, whether it was First Capital Connect before they handed over, or Thameslink, to give everybody their holidays, which means we all get cancelled. How many people are standing on that platform there this morning, Mary? Loads of people, loads of people. And they're standing on the other platforms that are going all the way up. Cricklewood, all those people are standing in wetness all the way up the line. Because and you know, when you, get, you know when you get if a train eventually arrives, it's going to be crowded, isn't it? Because everyone's going to be yes. wanting to get on it. Yes. Mary, I really appreciate your call. Thank you very much indeed. I do not miss that commute. I do not miss that commute. Um, isn't it interesting? Because when I, I spoke to... The, it's Govia, isn't it, who've taken over things. I spoke to someone ages ago, the head of, some, of something, of this new train line. I don't know who's in charge now. And they said things are going to get better. Things will be... You know, we're, we're going to sort this out. There'll be more seats. There'll be more carriages. And, um, well, we're hearing on Twitter and from Mary, it's getting worse. And yet two weeks ago when we spoke to the guy who's in charge of it now, they said, yeah, we know, it's terrible, isn't it? But we'll sort it out. Yeah. Uh, 08459 four double five five double five is the phone number. You got a cracking story in the in the sun. This story here, actually, uh, it's criminal, says the sun. What? Page twenty nine, criminal. But what's Bernard Cribbins done now? It's He's not on the, the list, is he? The nativity crib, which wasn't a crib, was it? Of course, it was a manger. Yeah. A couple blasted school bosses last night after they were made to remove a nativity play video from Facebook. Proud parents Douglas Holmes and Lisa Evans filmed daughter Emmy Ray, four, playing the innkeeper. Lisa, 33, put it online to share with friends and family, but next day one of the teachers told her to take it down. Good. Lisa says it's outrageous and has been blown out of all proportion. A lot of parents had to work and couldn't make the play. <laughs> Lisa said to the sun, it's been blown out of all proportion. <laughs> One mum was really grateful I posted it. One mum. My Facebook settings are extremely private. Only close friends can see what no. I post. This is uh, in South Wales. This What's happened. this lady's name? Uh, which one? The mum. The mum. Lisa Evans. Unacceptable behaviour, Lisa. Unacceptable Lisa behaviour. You film my kid in an activity play. By all means, hey, listen, thank you. Send, send me an email of it. I'd love to see it. Don't put it online. We all know the, what the score is there. And yeah. in fact, my school has a similar policy. And she said, look, we'll let you film. Please don't put them on Facebook. Don't yeah. put them on any social media. If we find that people are doing that, we won't let you film again. Yeah. I think that's fair enough. I think that is fair enough. I do think the thing about um, uh, you can't film your kids in plays is a myth. I've been at, at, at the nursery shows and school shows where the teacher said, Look, I've just got to check. Is everyone OK with other parents taking photos and making films? Yep, yeah, OK, great. And that's fine. Just, just to check, just in case there's a sourpuss in the audience. But then you don't put it... 
online. You don't put other people's kids online. Do you know what I wish the schools would do? They film it. They get a proper photographer yeah, yeah. and they film it because actually it's becoming a bit of a pain. Yeah. You're always sitting behind someone who's got a big iPad. Yeah, oh, the iPad. Um, and you know, and everyone's looking at it through a lens. What I'd really like, and I think you know, more schools should do this, and it could be a little money raiser for school funds. Is they film it, they get a decent, uh, you know, uh, cameraman in. Yeah. They do it, <clears> and everyone else can just sit there and enjoy the moment, be in the moment. Because to be honest, it's getting a bit daft. This. And also, I don't think there are paedophiles at home searching through uh, parents' Facebook pages to watch nativity plays and you know do what they they do. We mean googling tea towel headdress. Yeah, I don't. I don't think the majority of paedophiles. There probably is a niche group. I don't think the majority of paedophiles get turned on by kids dressed up as 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 shepherds. No, but there is another thing. There might be children who are being looked after or who are yep. adopted and you don't want their natural parents being able to it's, trace them. You don't know what people's circumstances are. You don't are. put other people's kids online. Are we right? We're Kat and I are speaking sense on this, aren't we? Aren't we? 08459 oh, five, 455555. Five, five. Whose side are you on? Are you on the school side that have told this, this mum to take the video off Facebook? Or do you agree with the mum that it's outrageous and she should be allowed to post these videos? 08459 455555 555. <laughs> Travel news for beds, cards and bugs. BBC Three Counties Radio. On the M25, the inside lane still closed anti-clockwise between junctions 24 and 23 from Potter's Bar to the A1 at South Mims after an accident. Traffic very slow for quite a stretch now towards and past the scene. There's a lane closed on the M11 on the northbound exit at junction 8 at Bishop Stortford where there was an accident earlier. That damaged the barriers so they're repairing those uh, right now. And I can see on the Luton departure boards a couple of cancellations showing uh, later the 727 to Bedford and the 7.30 uh, to Sutton via Wimbledon. So that's a Thameslink service that uh, has been cancelled. Russell Holding, BBC Three Counties Radio. Thank you very much indeed, Russell. 08459 four double five five double five. Here we go. Jill's emailed in. Thank you, Jill. You're, you're emailing a lot. Our children's primary school filmed the play and sell a DVD for a few quid to cover costs and raise money for the school. It also stops parents getting in the way by standing in front of others. Perfect. You can't put other kids that don't belong to you online. Hey, what you do with your kids is fine, but the school's right in this one, aren't they? Local and vocal across beds, hearts and bucks. This is BBC Three Counties Radio. It's seven o'clock, I'm Barry Caffrey. The headlines, ambulance service under pressure, eight children stabbed to death in Australia and Watford beggar jailed for breaking ASBO. BBC Three Counties Radio. Today is one of the busiest days of the year for the East of England Ambulance Service. This year it has been fined one and a half million pounds for poor response times and poor turnaround times at hospitals. Paramedic Nick Currington says he and his colleagues are under too much pressure and part of that pressure is because people ring for an ambulance when it's not necessary. The demands put on the ambulance service is, is quite severe. Um, I do believe that there are other avenues that people could use rather than the ambulance service. The ambulance service is for life-threatening conditions and not for things like I've got a cold, I've got a headache. Police in Australia say eight children have been found dead at a house in the coastal city of Cairns in northern Queensland. It's thought they'd been stabbed. A woman said to be their mother has been taken to hospital with stab wounds. The house in the suburb of Manura has been sealed off. More details from John Donison in Sydney. Queensland police say they were called to the house after reports a woman had been seriously injured. But inside, officers discovered the bodies of eight children. It's believed they'd been stabbed to death. Officers say the youngest was around 18 months old and the oldest 15 years old. A woman in her 30s has been taken to hospital with stab wounds. A family member outside the house told local reporters the woman was the children's mother. Women in the armed forces could be allowed to serve in frontline combat roles for the first time by 2016 after a review by the army. Military sources have told BBC News that there's a real desire to end the current ban and allow women to serve in infantry units, though further work is needed before a final decision is taken. 
An aggressive beggar in Watford has been jailed after breaching a two-year anti-social behaviour order to stop him from entering the town centre. Timothy Hart of St Albans Road was given the order at Stevenage Magistrates Court after a series of incidents which led to the police and the town's community safety team taking action to protect the public. Ewan Duncan reports. 35-year-old Timothy Hart breached an antisocial behaviour order by returning to Watford Town Centre almost immediately after it was issued. Hertfordshire police say he'd been arrested previously for several public order and criminal damage offences. These included verbal abuse by cash machines, intimidating women and girls walking past him and for indecent acts, including defecating in public. The order bars him from entering Watford Town Centre and from begging in England and Wales, while he's also prevented from obstructing council officers in their duties. Thames Valley Police has arrested 117 people for drink driving in the first two weeks of December. 44 of the arrests were in Buckinghamshire. The force is warning people to not drive when over the limit and they say they will be breathalysing people during the rest of December, both at night time and in the morning when people may be travelling into work after a night out. And the weather, the rain will clear away this morning to leave a dry day with some good sunny spells through the day. Maximum temperatures of 8 Celsius, that's 46 in Fahrenheit. And looking ahead to this weekend, it'll be a mainly dry weekend with some good sunny spells. Get the latest news and sport online at bbc.co.uk slash three counties. Today on BBC Three Counties Radio. From nine. The JVS Show. Looking at the day's biggest topics, bringing local stories to life and tackling your consumer problems from 12. Nick Coffer. I'll be finding out about Storybook Dads. It's a prison-based project that enables parents to continue to tell their children their bedtime stories even when they're inside. From 3. Roberto Peroni. I'll round off the week's news and then bring you an hour of the best entertainment. From 7. Mark Forrest. I'll bring you the best bits from everything that's been going on across BBC Local Radio. Today on BBC Three Counties Radio. <laughs> oh, Mr. Lambert, Mr. Lambert, what a what a deliciously wicked email you've sent us. <laughs> what a deliciously wicked email about our political reporter, Paul Scott. And his tissue of Christmas lies. <laughs> <laughs> he's mocked for those of you who don't remember Paul Scoynes um, lied uh, about the Christmas when he was a child and when he went much to our delight when he went sledging uh, with his younger brother it never happened uh, and, and uh, um, Barry has just um, um, has just sent us a picture there of um, well a mocked up picture Barry Lambert a mocked up picture of Paul Scoynes sledging with another child saying this will make a great story when I'm a political reporter we can tweet that right <laughs> I don't know if we can, it's highly inappropriate. Thank you for that. Uh, what have we got on the show today, Kath? Busy show already, isn't We're it? We're talking about how it's Black Friday again. But not the, not the good Black Friday. Not the one where you fight over a cheap telly. The bad Black Friday. The one where you fight over a girl you never noticed before in the typing pool. Yes. Apparently, because we're all going on Christmas booze ups, we're yep. going to be off our mash tonight and yep. uh, come a cropper, and the ambulance service will have to pick up the pieces. That's kicking off. We're also talking about Thameslink. We, we, we're going to be talking about Thameslink anyway at 10 to 8. And, and then we had a, a tweet from someone who said, You've got to talk about Thameslink. It's flipping awful. Um, so, your stories, please, uh, particularly over the last couple of weeks. And if you're stuck today, we hear it's, it's, it's pretty bad on there today. Yep. 08459 455555. If you can't call, you can send us a text, 813 three start your text 3cr we heard from mary she's at west hampstead she's livid very livid um if you can have degrees of lividation uh, and also what's this about facebook and uh, nativity plays oh yes there's a family in south wales who've hit back against school bosses let's call them teachers <laughs> for telling them to take off um a, a video of their child in a nativity play on facebook they said that the settings were set to private and uh, one no. of the other mums was really pleased to see it but the thing is it's not just their kid is it no you don't you don't do you don't put videos of other people's kids online yeah listen if you've just filmed if you've just got little john his face and he's doing his line and you want to share that, then I guess that that's fine. But if you've, you've filmed the show and you can see other people's kids, it's not up to you to put that online. John Mitchell uh, has, uh, has tweeted me, you're spot on with regard to video- videoing other people's kids. As a teacher, I could be sacked for putting such a film on Facebook. 08459 455. Where do your sympathies lay or indeed lie? Is it with the school or is it with the mum? Across beds, hearts and bucks. This is BBC Three Counties Radio. 
And by the way, if you um, click on John Mitchell's picture, doesn't he look like a teacher? And I say that with the greatest of respect. He looks like... I, 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 I would. It, I would love a teacher like that, proper, old-fashioned teacher. And I hope you're, you're not taking that as an insult, John, because it's not meant as such. Short back and sides, glasses, bow tie, lovely. I'll have that. Tweed jacket. Yeah, beautiful. Absolutely perfect. Um, if you want to tweet us, it's uh, at 3CR Kate or it's um, at uh, Ian Lee. And very quickly, another look, loads of tweets on um, Thameslink. Laura says, uh, just awful service currently. Are you aware her petition has been started re-poor service? I yes. wasn't aware. Yes, we did. That's uh, why we spoke to J- uh, James Montgomery two I weeks ago. I was completely aware of that. <laughs> and uh, thank you for um, reminding me, Catherine. You're welcome. Uh, now, let's go, get on to ambulances. Black Friday. If you thought that was over, well, think again. It turns out there are two Black Fridays. There was the shopping one. Kath says people were fighting over uh, uh, TV brands that we'd never heard of. Someone got bitten, didn't they? Someone got bitten, yeah, yeah. Uh, but this time, it's people uh, having uh, fights and coming a cropper because it's Christmas party time. It's a la 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 la. It's going to put extra strain on a service that's already under pressure. If you remember this year, the East of England Ambulance Service was fined one and a half million pounds for poor response and turnaround times. Well, this comes as well. When I think the head of the ambulance service, the National Ambulance Service, has just stepped down, haven't they? Because he was getting such a battering. I'm sure that happened uh, yesterday. Gary Sanderson is a retired paramedic and the former spokesman for the East of England Ambulance Service. Morning, Gary. Good morning to you. Uh, You worked within the service for 30 years. How much did things change within that time? Dramatically. uh, Obviously, the main one was call demand. I can remember when I joined several years ago, you know, you do one or two calls a night, you, you know, rarely picked up people under the influence of drinking, that, drugs, alcohol. But now the crews are just run ragged. Three to four thousand calls last weekend. I see on the news. You know, it's just it's getting worse. Um, and they're calling it Black Friday, that the Friday before Christmas, because it's Christmas party. People finishing work. Everyone going for a booze up. Has it always <laughs> been a particularly bad night? It is, uh, sadly. It's on the same level as New Year's Eve nights. Uh, I remember last year. You know, we hit several thousand calls on this, the Friday before Christmas, people at office parties just having too much to drink, you know, road traffic collisions, uh, call demands went up, people drink driving, fights, domestics, assaults, you name it. It was just, it, it, it'll be the same tonight. Here we go. And I, I knew I'd read this story. Uh, the, the Under Fire Ambulance Chief quits. Have a listen to this, Kath. The boss of two scandal-hit local and vocal, two scandal-hit ambulance services stepping down from one of them after just 11 months. Dr Anthony Marsh, Chief Executive of the West Midlands and the East of England Service, mm-hmm. will leave the second role as soon as a replacement is found. Um, is, is, it, is the right person walking, do you think, Gary? Or, 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 or is his job... Would he ever be able to do his job when there's just not enough money floating around? Obviously, uh, Dr Marsh has got his reasons for him leaving the service. Now, he's done an extremely uh, tremendous job coming in, recruiting more paramedics, mm. getting more paramedics on the road. You know, he, he set targets and he's come in and he's done that. So, you know, I can't comment on why he's, he's leaving, but, you know, he has done a lot of hard work while he's been in. What is the problem, Gary? Is it lack of funds? Is it lack of bodies? Is it lack of ambulances? What, what, what do you think? And I know you've not been in the service for a little while, but what do you think needs to be changed to, to, to get the ambulance service back up to the standard that we, we all remember? Look, the priority we need to do is to educate the public how to call for an ambulance. You know, people are still calling ambulances for toothaches, I've got for earaches, you know, minor ailments. That that is why the calls are going up. You know, I was there, I've seen it and done it, the crews out there. It's very frustrating getting calls for, for wasted calls on, on a regular basis. What, what were the kind of things that you turned up for then that, 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 that you, you know, you weren't needed for? A classic example was that a young lady called 909 because her husband was laying on the settee, unconscious. Uh, got there, and he's basically drunk, and oh. she wanted him to carried upstairs to bed. Oh, you're you know, joking. Clearly a waste of time. We want to be out there saving lives. That's the main thing. When you get something like that, do you have to bite your tongue, or are you allowed to give them the rollicking they deserve? <laughs> you, can, you can give them uh, advice, you know. <laughs> this is inappropriate. <laughs> 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 Profession, professional advice. But, you know... 
a big hands up for the crews out there. You know, police and fire as well. They're going to be busy tonight. You know, you know, just want people to dial 999 if you're having a stroke, heart attack. You know, the life, you know, things that people need ambulances for, not for a toothache or, or back backache you've had for six months. Mm. It, 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 it does, I find it incredible that, that people still, still, I guess, look, in 2014, if they're not getting the message that you don't call an ambulance just because you've, you know, you've, you've cut your fingernail a bit, a bit too short, I guess they're never going to get the message, are they? There will always be no. idiots out there. That's very true. And I, I think if we could introduce, or sorry, the service could introduce a policy where you could charge people for time wasting oh. inappropriate calls, it would open a big debate, but the call demand would drop dramatically. Do you know what? It's a big debate that I think we might have this morning, actually, Gary. Speaking Finally, um, you left the ambulance service. What are you doing now? I'm working now in a, a private rehydration clinic for Dr. Hilary Jones from ITV. Oh, the, 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 everyone loves Dr. Doc- very suave, Dr. He's Hilary, so isn't he? So handsome. So handsome. And is he really handsome in real life? He's, he is a very nice chap. I bet Silver he is. Fox says he's known to the ladies. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I, am I right? You, you're earning way more than you ever did as an ambulance driver. <laughs> or working on an ambulance. <laughs> You must have spies out there. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. Don't get Gary. We know everything about you. I guess, I guess, <laughs> it's one of those things. I just think it's incredible that, that such valuable services, such as paramedics and, and, and ambulance staff, we don't pay them enough. You know, we don't pay them enough for they. They literally. I, do you know what? I get paid quite well. What do I do? I sit on my backside for three hours talking nonsense. Those people literally save lives. That's true. You know, and I had a, a brilliant thirty years. You know, the amp service. I love. And finally, I sort of met my old crewmates last night at a Christmas party, and they're all sober. I've had some bread. Good lad, well done. Uh, uh, you know, but like you say, twenty-five grand a year for a paramedic. You know, outrageous. Basically, doubled. It's taking the mick. Gary, really nice to talk to you. Thank you very much. Have a good Christmas. Oh eight four five nine four double five five double five. A point I'd never considered, um, but an interesting point nonetheless. Should you get charged if you call out the ambulance for a non? Emergency. I suppose the argument against that is then, well, who is the person who decides that it's a non-emergency and would that put some people off calling? Because they might be concerned that, you know, uh, the, 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 a, the, it, maybe it's not an emergency and we haven't got the money to pay it. So I suppose that would be the argument against. But there's something. There's something in it, isn't it? Because you get... It, I mean, that's an incredible story. Some people do it for a laugh. Yeah. Some people are doing it definitely with a, either malicious or stupid kind of reasons behind it. Get them. I was 10 years old. I phoned up 999 and I said to the woman, the woman answered, I think it was nine. I remember it vividly. The woman said, yeah, emergency services. I said, yeah, can you get me Superman, please? She went, what? I said, can you get me Superman? She says, right, you are wasting serious time. The police will come around there soon, so you better stop doing this. Scared the life out of me. Scared the life out of me. And would never, ever do anything like that ever again. The times I've had to dial 999, yep. I really thought really hard about it. And yeah. thought, is there any other way around this one? Yep. 08459 four double five five double five. Did you ever get hold of Superman? No, it turns out that's not his number. He lives in America, so uh, I have to dial um, uh, 911. That's yeah, that's, that's the one. 08459 four double five five double five. Travel news for beds, cards and bugs. BBC Three Counties Radio. Well, the M25 still has a lane closed anti-clockwise in between junctions 24 and 23, the bit from Potter's Bar to the A1 at South Mims. The queue's now back to junction 25, the A10 Enfield turn. They've still got this lane closure as well on the M11 on the northbound exit at junction 8 at Bishop Stortford for barrier repairs after they were damaged in an accident yesterday afternoon. That doesn't look like it's causing too much trouble, though it is very slow on the M11 going into London after Junction 5 at Loughton down towards uh, the North Circular. Speed sensors aren't picking up too many other delays. Things just beginning to busy up a little bit here and there. And the A5 heading away from the M1, kind of halfway between Flamstead and Markgate, there's a bit of a queue. Airport way coming away from Luton Airport now looking a little bit slow, but uh, thankfully not a significant delay. And on the trains, uh, there are a couple of track cancellations on the Luton departure boards, the 727 to Bedford and the 730 to Sutton via Wimbledon, both showing as cancelled. Russell Holding, BBC Three Counties Radio. Thank you, Russell. 7.16, it is Friday the 19th of December. I'm Ian Lee, these are your headlines on BBC Three Counties Radio. 
Workers at the East of England Ambulance Service are gearing up for one of their busiest days of the year. This comes just after Dr Anthony Marsh, the chief executive, steps down from his £232,000 a year roll. And eight children have been found murdered in a house in Cairns in Australia. BBC's Three Counties Radio. Weekend Kitchen. On Sunday morning, the Weekend Kitchen takes all the stress out of your Christmas meals. Even if you have never cooked Christmas lunch before, this is a great place to start. We'll bring you 15 simply perfect recipes for you to make at home. Makes it light but buttery and it's so quick. Including a clever roast turkey for two. What I've done is I've actually braised it. I've sort of pot roasted it with some vegetables and some wine. Delicious desserts. I've poached some pears in cranberry juice and I put them in a trifle. I've made a jelly with the cranberry juice that I've, I've simmered them in. And even ideas on what to do with all those leftovers. Basically just chop it all up, stir in a bit of the tikka paste that you can buy in the shops. The Weekend Kitchen Christmas Special, Sunday morning from 11 on BBC Three Counties Radio. Across beds, hearts and bucks. This is Ian Lee. BBC Three Counties Radio. Here we go. We'll get back to the laugh soon. Don't worry, dear listener. Uh, a beggar has been jailed after breaching an ASBO, which was supposed to stop him hassling people in Watford. Timothy Hart from St Albans Road had been reported for pressurising people at cash points, intimidating female passers-by and doing both his toilets in public. He was told to stay out of the town centre. He didn't. Now he's in prison. Well, let's talk to Dr Sean Gabb, who's the director of the Libertarian Alliance. Morning, Sean. What's your reaction to this story? Well, good morning, Ian. I uh, must say that I don't like beggars. They're smelly, they're annoying, bit of an eyesore, aren't they? Uh, but, ha- however, what I don't like about uh, this is the way in which um, a, an evident nuisance has been dealt with. I, I don't like the principle of ASBOs. W- what you have with an ASBO is punishment without a law. Um, y- y- the crime has not been declared. You can get an ASBO for doing all sorts of things which are perfectly legal for other people to do. So you have tailored criminal justice. And when he breached this ASBO, doing something which does not appear to have been an actual crime in itself, uh, he went to prison. I I don't like this. Um, ASBOs are the thin end of a wedge that ends up in a thorough police state. That being said, if you want to get rid of beggars, if if you don't want them cluttering up the streets, Stop giving to them. Begging is one or two exceptions aside, people with um, very severe mental problems or in the aftermath of a natural disaster. Begging is a rational choice. If people think they can get 30, 40, 50, 100, 200 pounds, whatever a day, by sitting on a street corner looking pathetic or um, aggressively demanding it from passers-by, that's what they will do. And the thing to do is to stop giving to them. It's interesting that you um, think beggars are an eyesore uh, when, as, as a libertarian, of course, you, 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 you seek autonomy and freedom of choice. And, and, and that is their choice, isn't it? I don't like rock music. I don't propose to ban it, but I still have a right to say I don't like it. And I'm saying that um, I regard beggars as an eyesore. I don't think that they are appropriate in a country as rich as this is. And the best way to deal with them is not to set the law on them, but to stop giving to them. There's nothing unlibertarian about that. Is, is, the, best, is the best way to deal with them not to treat those people with, with mental illness who've ended up begging or to uh, help those people who've fallen between the cracks in society and can't feed themselves? That is an option, isn't it? That is an option. However, it's, in my experience, the great majority of people begging in the streets do, do not need to beg. They How do you know that, beg. Sean? Um, I said in my experience, looking at it as a prejudice, but prejudice often can ah, a great... Well, difference. prejudice isn't experience, is it? Prejudice and experience are different things. Not necessarily, no, but let's not be too philosophical in the morning. My experience of beggars, <laughs> particularly in London... You started, is, Sean! Uh, well, I know I did, but it's early in the morning. My experience of beggars, particularly in the centre of London, is that they have travelled halfway across Europe to get here to beg, and... 
uh, there's probably nothing at all wrong with their brain. See, the thing is, that isn't my experience. I've um, uh, quite often, for some reason, beggars in London seem to recognise me because I did telly 15 years ago. And so I quite often end up talking to these people and quite often they do have a mental health condition, they do have uh, an, an addiction, uh, or, or they have fallen on hard times, you know, that they've lost their family and they've, they've lost their jobs. Many people with addictions, many people who fall on hard times end up as beggars, and I feel sorry for them, and there may well be things that we can do for them. But that is not to say that the majority of beggars no. are in need of a handout. The, the majority of beggars I have encountered, as I said, have travelled halfway across Europe, and in some cases halfway across the world, to get to the streets of London and um, to sit looking pathetic. And, uh, as I said... What I normally do with these people is walk straight past them and I do not, I do not listen to their implications. Do you never, do you never, if they're outside like an S or something, do you never pop in and buy them a sandwich or a, a bottle of water or something? I was once many years ago accosted by a German beggar uh, who asked me to go into, a, into an off-licence and buy him a bottle of Valpolicella. And... And what did you do, Sean? He gave me a five-pound note... And I went in, and I thought, yeah. So I bought him two bottles. But that is not um, my normal behaviour. No. Would you ever buy a big issue? No. Why not? Do you think that that's perpetuating the problem? Yes, I do. Also, I think it's a dreary magazine. I, I, do you know what? I'll give you that. It is really badly written. <laughs> yes, it is, isn't it? It's quite dull. If I have to give to a beggar, I'll give him money to go and buy a drink or drugs or something. I'm not buying an awful magazine. Yes. Uh, th- this gentleman we're talking about, Mr Hart, um, mm. I- I- he's been a pest, hasn't he? And, and if, I guess if he won't accept help, what is there that could be done, Sean? The thing is that um, if he's not actually breaking one of, the, one of the traditional laws of this country, which have always been adequate in the past to dealing with nuisances, if he's not breaking one of the known traditional laws of the country, he should be left alone. And the only, treat, the, the, the only, the only response you can make to him is not to give to him. He's doing his toilets um, both on the pavement. Well, that involves a breach of the peace and... Um, indecent exposure. Why does it need an ASBO? My objection is to ASBOs, I'll repeat, is that they are just, that they're criminal justice, in quotation marks, tailored to each individual case. And so you can be told by the police not to do a certain act, which in itself is not illegal, and that is wrong. I'm not saying that the acts covered by ASBOs are entirely fit and proper. What I'm saying is that the principle of ASBOs is extraordinarily sinister. Sean, I've really enjoyed talking to you this morning. I hope maybe we can talk again in the new year. Yes, indeed. Have a, good, have a happy Christmas. Have a reggae Christmas, Sean. Thank you very much indeed. 08459 four double five five double five. I enjoyed that. I thoroughly enjoyed that because um, I like speaking to people who've got different points of view. So what this, this is what life is all about, isn't Did it? Did you hear him say that yeah. rather than buying a dreary magazine, he'd give them money for yeah. booze or drugs? <laughs> he makes a good point. Um, he made one good point in there. The big issue is a dull magazine. But that reminds me of an incident I had recently outside a well-known... Uh, oh, yeah, go on. This is good. We didn't mention this yesterday, did we? This is a good story. I was really shocked. I was really shocked. Maybe I shouldn't have been. I was going to pick up a parcel. You know, you can do this collect, collect thing where you don't have to pay postage. You just have to go to a local supermarket and pick up this parcel. So I went to do that. And as I was walking in, there was an old lady in front of me. And we walked past a big issue seller who was a woman with a headscarf, probably Eastern European accent, who was saying, Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas. Okay? Wow, you did the voice. Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas. But I, I'm trying to do the voice at the volume in which she was doing it. Okay. It was very quiet. Yeah. It was... It was you, you remember the um, the uh, Feed the Birds woman from, from Mary Poppins? I do, yes. Similar timbre to the voice, similar volume. Yep. Yeah, it was more of a kind soft. of... Soft. Yeah, soft. Soft. You could take the Christmas greeting, you could leave it. Yeah. Anyway, so I'm walking into the shop and... I get to the uh, point where I'm going to go and get my uh, my parcel, and the old lady in front of me goes up to the staff member and says, "I couldn't believe it." Says, "You must stop that woman out there. It's ringing in my ears. It's awful, awful. You must stop it." What is selling the big issue? She's not saying buy the big issue. She's not screaming big issue. Uh, some of them are quite miserable, and I don't buy magazines off them. I no. like the cheerful ones. Yeah, I don't like miserable homeless people. We like the the chirpy ones. Yeah, with the, the well, you know, they're salesmen. The knotted handkerchief tied up. They're salesmen and women. You yeah. know, I like to have a bit of uh, yeah. bit of sales going on. Anyway, 
So she complained about the big issue seller wishing her a happy Christmas. What a miserable old... Really? Isn't that... That's tight, isn't it? But I she's... don't think she was really moaning about that. No. She I think she was uncomfortable. With the race. The race? Was it a race thing? Don't know. Poverty thing? Uh, similar... Well, I mean, it's interesting. I really enjoyed talking to Dr Sean Gabb, and I kind of... So much... I could have spoken to him all morning. So much we could talk about. Can I throw this over to you? Are... What's the question? Are beggars an eyesore? That was the word he used, wasn't it? Similar to this, this, this woman you spoke to. Are they an eyesore? Are they an irritation? Here's oh. two other questions. Are there no prisons? Are oh. there no workhouses? 08459 four double five five double five. Uh, um, man Fifi on Twitter says, a man who says he walks straight past beggars also knows they've come halfway across the world. How? Hashtag psychic powers. <laughs> uh, let's put this out there, because... Um, I think it's sad there are beggars. I don't find them an eyesore or an irritation. Um, and I do... I've, I've not been in London th- th- properly for ages, but I'd, I'd often have a, sit and have a little chat with... Uh, the, there's a beggar by a cash machine in the, uh, by the NatWest, just off Oxford Street, and I'd have a chat with him, and I'd sit down and have a chat with him. And he'd talk about me being on the telly, and I'd talk about how he ended up where he was. And I was with him once, and uh, some coppers came. He went, oh, I'm about to get hassled. You better go. And I stayed for a bit, and they did. They were really... Come on, move on, move on. I was like, what are you doing? He's, you know, he's, he's having a tough time. Do you find beggars and I saw, are they in irritation? 08459 four double five five double five. I wouldn't give them money. No, no, no. But I bought a magazine and I bought a sandwich. Yeah, I, I, well done you. Well, I just thought she, then she doesn't need to spend her money on lunch, does she? No, I, I, I'll buy them a sandwich from time to time. Um, what, what do we send Justin out on? We've got so much good stuff to send Justin out on, whether it's... Um, uh, well, it's the Nativity, pl- Nativity Play or Beggars. It's one of those two, isn't it? Yeah. Which one do you fancy? I bet you could do both. Yeah? Just, do you find... Uh, not, this isn't question isn't for you, Justin. Do you find Beggars an eyesore and an irritation? And what's the question for Facebook? For... Uh, the, for the Nativity Play? Are the school being harsh? Yeah. Come down, we'll give you the stories. 08459 four double five five double five is the phone number for you, dear listener. Travel news for beds, cards and bugs. BBC Three Counties Radio. Uh, got a couple of problems on the M25. One is a lane blocked anti-clockwise between junctions 24 and 23 from Potter's Bar to the A1 at South Mims. It's been ongoing for a while now. It's causing queues from junction 25, the A10M field turn. And uh, it's also looking very slow now, anti-clockwise 17 to 16 from Maple Cross to the M40. Uh, seeing some delays on the speed sensors on the B158 from the Woodfield Lane Junction down to the A1000. So going towards uh, Brookman's Park as you head away from Essendon. So that uh, looking very slow. Still looks very slow coming away from Luton Airport as well on Airport Way. Uh, M11's got a lane closed on the northbound exit at Junction 8 at Bishop Stortford for barrier repairs where they were damaged in an accident yesterday afternoon. To be honest, Ian, that's not really causing any delays from what I can see on the uh, speed sensors uh, right now. Uh, Russell Holding, BBC Three Counties Radio. Thank you, boss. Across beds, hearts and bugs. This is BBC Three Counties Radio. It's half past seven, I'm Barry Caffrey. The headlines, today is one of the busiest days of the year for the East of England ambulance service with many people expected to drink to excess. This year, the service has been fined one and a half million pounds for poor response times and poor turnaround times at hospitals. Police in Australia say eight children have been found dead at a house in the coastal city of Cairns in northern Queensland. It's thought they'd been stabbed. A woman, said to be their mother, has been taken to hospital with stab wounds. An aggressive beggar in Watford has been jailed after breaching a two-year antisocial behaviour order to stop him from entering the town centre. 35-year-old Timothy Hart breached an antisocial behaviour order by returning to Watford almost immediately after it was issued. Hertfordshire police say he had been arrested previously for several public order offences. Women could be allowed to serve in frontline combat roles by 2016. Military sources have said there's a real desire to end the ban, but more research needed to be done. And the weather, any rain will clear away this morning to leave a dry day, with some good sunny spells through the day and highs of 8 Celsius, that's 46 in Fahrenheit. Three Counties Sports. BBC Three Counties Radio. 
Watford are likely to field a similar team to last week as they head to Reading in the Championship tomorrow. The Hornets will come up against opposition who have just appointed Steve Clark as manager. Not an ideal time to play them, according to Watford boss Slavisa Djukanovic. Really, it's not good news for, for us always uh, where, uh, after these changes, especially first uh, first game, it's uh, in Spain, say, new, new coach, new win. I expect it's not going to happen like uh, like this, but the uh, level of the attention of uh, Reading going to be in, in the highest possible level. MK Dons will be without the injured Ben Reeves again as they take on Oldham in League One. Luton Town have skipper Steve McNulty back from suspension for tomorrow's visit of Newport in League Two. Ahead of Christmas next week, manager John Still has been discussing whether his players will get more time off. Day off? No, when do we get a day off then? Monday or Tuesday? Why? No day off. Day off Sunday. No day off Sunday. There'd be a you know, normal time off for recovery. But by and large, nothing changed. Stevenage could be without the services of Charlie Lee and Darius Charles for the League One game against Exeter tomorrow. Borough have been hit hard with injuries this season, but manager Graham Westley will not be looking for players in the January transfer window. What we're looking for is to actually get some stability. Um, Stability is a massive thing in football. Uh, You look at the years when we've had success, it's not been about bringing loads and loads of players in, it's been about developing the players that we've got, bringing those players along and they don't need to play in constant fear of their places, they need to know that they're believed in and they need to know that uh, their development is top of our priority. We've got some good players here. Wickham Wanderers head to Accrington Stanley aiming to preserve their lead at the top of League Two. And nationally, Liverpool striker Mario Balotelli has apologised after the Football Association banned him for one match for posting an anti-Semitic picture which contained racist references on social media. Balotelli, who also received a £25,000 fine and must attend an education course, says he regrets the post and vowed to make sure it never happens again. And in cricket, the England cricket selectors are due to meet today to decide on a 16-man squad for next month's tri-series against Australia and India. The squad, which will be announced tomorrow morning, may not include Captain Alistair Cook after he admitted that he would have no complaints if he is stood down following four straight series defeats under his leadership. BBC Three Counties Radio News and Sport. I'll be back with a full bulletin at 8 o'clock. On FM, AM, online and digital radio. This is Ian Lee. On BBC Three Counties Radio. So, have you seen Balotelli's racist tweet? No. He's got form though, hasn't he? He's a bit of a loose loose. Well, first of all, 25 grand. Uh, Well, okay. let me just reach down the back of the sofa and get that, says Mario Balotelli. He's going to go on a course, speed awareness. Banned for a match. I've I've got the post in front of me. Right. I'm going to say, it's a picture of um, Super Mario, the the, um, computer game character. Um, And it says, jumps like a black man, grabs coins like a Jew. Now, now, okay, yeah, it's, it's not appropriate. Shouldn't have tweeted it. It's not the most racist. I mean, it's um, it's, it's um, stupid. It's stupid and it's unpleasant and it's it and it, he he is a black man, so I guess he can say he jumps like a black man if he wants. Um, it's stupid. It's stereotypical. It's not the worst thing I've ever read by a long stretch of the imagination. It's not inciting violence. It's not. It's, it's further in a really old-fashioned stereotype about Jewish people, though, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, of course, Com- completely. I think it's I think it's an overreaction well, on part of the football what, authority. What they're doing is making an example of him. Yes, his apology is great. I apologise if I've offended anyone. The post was meant to be anti-racist with humour. Okay, when people say I apologise if I've offended you, it means <laughs> I apologise for your. Yeah, it means I've not reaction. taken responsibility yeah. for it. I now He's understand. He's not saying I shouldn't have done that. I now he? understand that out of context, it may have the opposite effect. Not all Mexicans have moustache. Not all black people jump high, and not all Jewish people love money. Why I is he u- talking about Mexicans? Mario's Italian. I don't. I use racist. I used a cartoon done by someone else because it had Super Mario, and I thought it was funny and not offensive. Again, I'm sorry. I don't think it's a. F- I'm, I'm not Jewish. But, well, well, you know, the, oi, what do I know? I don't think it's. Uh, I don't think it's particularly offensive. I think it's stupid. stupid. I think it's stupid. I think 25 grand, banned from from playing a match and um, uh, going on a course, I think is an overreaction. 
Oh eight four five nine four double five five double five. Your thoughts, please. Well, it has to be said that within football there is a problem with racism, and oh. so that's why they're jumping up and down and stamping on this one. Don't say jumping up and down. That's part of this thing. I can say jumping up and down. Everyone's jumping up and down. Okay. Within the football, what we call in it, industry. Yeah. <laughs> why? Why not? I don't think. I mean, I, 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 do, do, do you have to be Jewish to to be offended by the thing? I don't. I just think it's stupid. But also, the apology is not an apology. If taken out of context, that just means you don't get it. 08459 four double five five double five. Mario Balotelli branded a racist because he posted a picture of Super Mario with the caption, jumps like a black man and grabs coins like a Jew. Uh, I, I don't think that's particularly racist. 08459 four double five five double five. I think it's stupid. I think it's old-fashioned. I think it's, um, it panders to stereotypes that are not particularly pleasant. But... It doesn't look good on him. No. There you go. Um, Catherine, Text. what have we... What are we talking about? We're talking about the nativity play yes. that uh, one mum filmed in Wales and she put it all on Facebook and she was told by the school, could you take that off Facebook, please? Yes. Her she's, reaction? She's up in arms. She's gone to the papers. She's gone to the papers. It's blown out of all proportion, she said to a Sun reporter. Uh, I'm with the school on this. You don't put videos of other people's kids on the internet. I saw this a couple of days ago online and I thought, this is not news. This is yeah. a lot of schools have that policy now and for quite good reasons. And it's not about... About, you know, getting into the, the videos into the hands of paedophiles. It's about the fact that children have a right to privacy. That's and what that it you, is. It's your decision to make That's whether your kid goes on the internet. Exactly or not. what it is. There are people, and there's me thinking, oh, it's to protect kids from paedophiles. No. It's it's political correctness gone mad. It's not. It's about privacy. It's about basic basic privacy. I decide That's whether what it is. I decide whether everybody sees a picture of my children. We don't put our children. We sometimes we use our children's voices on air. Yeah. No one knows what they're called. Yeah. No. You know, I don't put pictures up in the public arena. Nope. I put them in, on my Facebook and I don't involve anyone else's children it's unless not, they give me permission to do that. It's not about paedophiles, it's about the basic rule of privacy. 08459 four double five five double five. Also, you don't know what other people's family situations are. They nope. may not be with the, the partner and yep. they may not want to be found by the partner. You put them on Facebook, you could be lending them in a whole lot of trouble. We got any texts on this? Uh, let's see. No. Have we got any texts on the homeless? We spoke, yes. we're talking about a homeless gentleman who, uh, excuse me, has had uh, Asbo served on him. He's not allowed to go into Watford anymore because, um, well, he sounds like he does some thoroughly unpleasant stuff. Toilets and harassing women and things like that. If he's like not that. got anywhere to live, he is going to go to the toilet outdoors, isn't he? Um, we've had a, a text from Scott who says that tramps do poos behind his shop. Does he win five pounds? There's no money for that. No. But we spoke to Dr Sean Gabb, a voice we're definitely going to get on the show again, a, a director of the Libertarian Alliance, a group I'm not familiar with but will be by about half past nine this morning, who said uh, home Homeless people are an eyesore. Beggars. Beggars are an eyesore. Saying that, he wouldn't want to ban them. He's a libertarian. Yeah. But he doesn't like seeing them. Uh, are they an eyesore? 08459 four double five five double five. This is from Miriam. There was a homeless person using a recess next to Argos in Spencer Street, St Albans, as a toilet. Both toilets. There we go. There we go. Brackets. And apologies if you're eating your breakfast. You may want to just close your ears a moment. There was a poo there for weeks. I had to pass it to get into Argos. Wowzers. Helen in Milton Keynes wants to talk about the ambulance service. Hello, Helen. Some other people as well. Uh, Helen in Milton Keynes. Having had to use the out-of-hours service twice recently when my mum was very ill and they sent an ambulance and paramedic as though she needed to be hospitalised, the second time we had to wait in A&E for five hours and saw numerous people that should have gone to urgent care centres. Underpaid paramedics and ambulance crews bear the brunt of management failure to deal with time wasters who should be made to pay for treating urgent care as a taxi service. By the way, have a reggae Christmas. <laughs> oh, have a very... Re- it's been a bit heavy the last 40 minutes or so. We'll, we'll line it up, That's don't worry. That's interesting, isn't it? So the out-of-hours service, you yeah. call the out-of-hours service and they send an ambulance. That's completely not what the out-of-hours service was supposed to do, is no. it? No, no, exactly. Crazy. Oh eight four five nine four double five five double five is the phone number. Also, David in Hemel says on the on the news, the ambulance service has been fined. How does that help? And why such a large fine, says David? It's interesting. The head of um, the, uh, the former head of the East of England Ambulance Service and Dr. Anthony Marsh, still the chief exec of West Midlands, uh, got two hundred thirty-two thousand pounds a year. That's about hundred thousand pounds more than the prime minister gets. But about ninety thousand pounds more than the prime minister gets. And it's a little under what I earn. I'm joking, of course. I, I don't. I'm, I'm assuming that was the combined salary yeah. for West Midlands That's and two East jobs, of England. Isn't it? Uh, and uh, t- uh, claiming more than twenty-five thousand pounds a year in expenses. 25 grand a year in expenses. I, I kind of defend expenses. If you're entitled to them, you're entitled to them. But 25 grand a year. Do you know what that would be? That would be travelling between the two uh-huh. places, wouldn't it? Of course yeah. it is. Of course it is. It's travelling between the two offices. Oh! He's an evil genius. 
He, anyway, he stepped down from the East of England uh, service. Um, Dr Marsh, um, whose £232,000 salary was branded obscene by Health Minister Dr Dan Poulter, has faced a backlash for t- juggling the two struggling services. Just this week, a report by the East of England service found paramedics were leaving bodies unattended at ambulance stations for hours to avoid finishing shifts late. It's interesting, isn't it, that uh, uh, um, both of his, uh, the services under his remit um, have been fined, well, just under four million quid in yeah, total. But I wonder how many other ambulance services have been fined too. It seems as if the system needs a shake-up, doesn't it? 08459 four double five five double five is the phone number. Hey, guys, uh, we, do, do you know that um, uh, America just lost a war? Were you aware of this? America's been to war... And it lost. It didn't just lose, it surrendered. Is this the, uh... It bent over and took it from Kim Jong-un. Can I say that? Are we allowed to say that or is the BBC going to get taken off the air? Uh, so basically, Hollywood has pulled what looks like it was going to be a pretty pony film, to be on Pretty poor film, the interview, starring Seth Rogen. Oh, I quite like Seth Rogen. He's, he's harmless, although his last few films have been rubbish. Uh, they've pulled it from cinema release and uh, from uh, DVD release because uh, Sony has been hacked, allegedly, by North Korea. I don't know if I buy that. I'm not sure if I'm into that I, uh, Into that story. North Korea's got a lot of stuff to do at the moment, hasn't it? Keeping people uh, subjugated and that. Why would they be messing about with Sony? A sinister hacking group run by, a North, Kore- by North Korean leader Kim Jong-un is behind the crippling attack on Sony Pictures. Details of Unit 121 emerged as film giant ditched a comedy which mocks Kim amid, th- amid threats, of t- threats of terror attacks on cinemas. And more online leaks about top stars. Oh, gosh, don't give us more gossip about what star- names celebrities use when they check into hotels, please. <laughs> Hollywood actors yesterday described the axing of the interview as a defeat for free speech. David Walliams, it's a sad day when Sony Pictures bows to the will of a brutal dictator. Steve Carell, sad day for creative expression. <laughs> But Ben Stiller, really hard to believe this is a response to a threat to freedom of expression here in America. Hang on a minute, is he saying he doesn't believe it? <laughs> it's odd, isn't it? Is it just a really rubbish film and they decided that rather than embarrassing you go, do you know what, let's not. Let's it will not. pop up on, online somewhere, guys. It's, it's popped up a few times and I've missed it each time. There's a preview copy, but preview copies get sent out to people, to, 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 to reviewers. It to was reviewed pre- last night on um, Radio 4 on Front Row. Was it? What did they think? I didn't listen. Oh. I was trying to get two, two really annoying boys to fall asleep. Oh, I was trying to get one to fall asleep. The other one had fallen asleep. So I don't know. But it does seem odd that America's gone, yeah, all right, we'll withdraw it. And it, well, it's not America, it's Sony. It's a company that have done it. When Sony should just come out and go, come on, Kim, what you got? Let's it's have it. It's a film. It. It's a film. And another film about... There was a um, film called The Pope Must Die, wasn't there? <laughs> I don't think many people saw that. The Eric Idle uh, comedy. Yeah, The Pope Must I, Die. I don't think... I went to the pictures to and see that. And what was that. Nuns on the Run? Weren't they trying to... Weren't they trying to... No, that was um, Robbie Coltrane yeah. and Eric Idle dressed up as nuns and they were on the run. I don't think they were trying to assassinate anybody. No, but it wasn't like Sister Act. No, The Pope on the... The, the... Pope Must Die was Nuns on the Run, wasn't it? No, they were two separate films. You're thinking oh. of Splitting Airs. Uh, 08459 four double five five double five. Can someone help us, please, with uh, the Eric Idle filmography? Because we are struggling. There have been other films where real-life people have been yeah. the target of assassination attempts. Yes, JFK. Yeah, but during their time. Kelly, what are your thoughts on this, please? Yes. Thanks very much indeed. Travel news for beds, cards and bugs. BBC Three Counties Radio. Well, the N25 still has a lane closed anti-clockwise. Ian Junction's 24 to 23 from Potter's Bar to the A1 at South Mims. Queues to Junction 25 at the A10 Enfield turn. Though the Highways Agency tell us they do hope to have that lane back open fairly soon, but it could take a little while for the delays to clear. M11 looks like it's queuing into London from around Junction 5 at Loughton. There's also a lane closed on the northbound exit at Junction 8 at Bishop Stortford where they're repairing the barriers after an accident uh, yesterday afternoon. Uh, Delays look to be building up a little bit on the A1M. There's a section just on the southbound side as you pass Junction 7 at Stevenage which looks uh, very slow but if anything I'd say a little bit lighter uh, than normal. Looks a bit busy on the A120 heading away from Bishop Stortford uh, towards the sort of Puckeridge area. There's a bit of a queue there. A little bit busy the other way towards Bishop Stortford but uh, not so so bad really by the looks of things. Uh, Russell Holding, BBC Three Counties Radio. Coming up, we'll talk about Thameslink. We spoke to Maria earlier on, who was stuck in West Hampstead. Well, she's just rocked up in Luton, and she's with our reporter, Justin Dealey. 
We'll get to her as soon as we can. These are your headlines, though, on BBC Three Counties Radio. Today is one of the busiest days of the year for the East of England Ambulance Service, with many people expected to drink to excess. And an aggressive beggar in Watford has been jailed after breaching a two-year anti-social behaviour uh, order to stop him from entering the town. Let's get the weather. Here's Georgina. Beds, hearts and bucks weather. BBC Three Counties Radio. Hello there. We've still got a little bit of drizzly rain and cloud around, but that's gradually clearing off to the southeast. Once it does, we've got a really pleasant day ahead of us. So crystal blue skies, lots of sunshine, lighter winds. Now we reach highs of about 10 or 11 degrees Celsius this morning, but then it becomes progressively cooler. So don't be caught out if you are leaving the house this morning. By this afternoon, it is going to be a lot colder. And a clear, cool night to follow. Cloudy in, in the early hours of the morning with lows of 4 degrees. Plenty of sunny spells around tomorrow. It should stay dry, a touch more breezy though, with highs of 8 degrees, so feeling that bit more chilly. Now, it looks like we could have a frost on Saturday night, but then it becomes milder again from Sunday through till the, uh, well, pretty much the middle of next week, actually. So, fairly cloudy as well, with bits and pieces of drizzle and light rain around. Um, But yeah, feeling that bit warmer all the same. That's your latest forecast. Call 08459 455 555. BBC Three Counties Radio. It's funny how these things sometimes work out. In a minute, we're going to speak to uh, James Montgomery, who uh, spoke to us a couple of weeks ago about um, the train service, the Thameslink train service, and how rotten it had been since new operators, Govia, had taken over. Well, this morning, by coincidence, we had a tweet from someone saying, you've got to talk about Thameslink. It's flipping awful. Then we had a phone call from um, it was was it Mary, Mary yes who um, was was very frustrated to say the least saying it's been a terrible service recently and um, she was struggling to get to work lots of people on um, Twitter saying the same uh, Lee says two months of hell to work and back cattle are treated better. People not particularly happy. Well, Justin, you, you ran down... Are you at Luton Station? Yeah, I'm at Luton Train Station right now. Things aren't great, that's for sure. What's going on, Justin? Describe well, it. Well, when you go into the train station, straight away on the TV screens, we're sorry for, for any cancellations. In saying that, um, there wasn't a cancellation on the screen at the moment. I'm sure there there were a few earlier, a few delays. But, but people... I've, I've not been down here for a long time. And as soon as people see the BBC badge, they're coming up to me to talk about their, their frustration about this new service. Because wow. a moment ago, I spoke to a school teacher and he could hardly speak. He was that annoyed. He said, Look, I'm teaching children. They rely on me. They need me to be there. He said, 50% of the time, as a school teacher, I'm turning up late to school because of the train service. Detention. That's, yeah, exactly. That's a teacher. Um, I've got some more reactions, some brief reaction coming up here from another commuter who, again, came up to me to volunteer information. Well, Russell, here we are at Luton train station. Since Govia have taken over this service, um, what's your take on things? Has the service improved at all? No. It's delays every day. Trains, trains cancelled. No service at all. Some days. It's terrible. So really, it's, it's got worse. It's, it's a lot worse. A hell of a lot worse. I mean, my missus here who got stuck in train station the other, t- the other night, two and a half hours. No one was giving information. No one was telling her anything. And she was just stuck there. I mean, I, I travelled into London from Hemel um, for a year and I found the whole thing so frustrating. I couldn't take it anymore. You're doing this day in, day out. How much longer can you carry on like this? Not long. Let's put it this way. Don't start the service up soon. Start the service getting better soon. We'll have to find alternative accommodation to get there. Also, the routes because I'm getting a car and I don't really want to drive there because I've got kids at home, but it means I've got to leave the kids at home on their own while I take the missus into work so she can get to work so she don't get sacked. And that's the thing, isn't it? People afraid about losing their jobs. How often are people going into work late saying it was the trains? Um, how long will their bosses put up with that? People here at Luton train station, again, not happy with the train service. And is it right, Justin, that, that um, Ma- uh, Mary, we spoke to earlier mm. on, came up to you? Yes. Um, again, she was in a bit of a state saying, you've got to do something about this. Um, she was saying that since Govia have taken over this route, uh, things have got worse. And she just wants something done about this. Um, yeah. She can't understand how we can't seem to run trains on time in this country. 
Justin, well done for, for getting over there and, and speaking to those people. Do let us know if, uh, if there are any more developments. Well, the, the reason we were going to be doing this story is because we spoke to a gentleman called James Montgomery two weeks ago from Hemel, and he told us, Kath, that, he, that, he, that since Govia had taken over, a not particularly good service uh, uh, um, had got significantly worse. Yeah, he was fed up and he wanted something done about it. And when we spoke to the spokesperson for the, the service, he kind of... He wasn't surprised, was he, at the, no. the disgruntled passengers? He said, yeah, I know, it, it's not as good as it should be. He said it would pick up in January, didn't he? I think, if I remember correctly. Um, he didn't say it was going to get a lot worse between now and January. Well, James uh, joins us again. Morning, James. Morning, Ian. Uh, this, this interview is kind of moot now because we're, we're hearing from people at the train station. But, yeah. but tell, us, tell us what it's been like for you the last two weeks. Um, it... Well, obviously, when I spoke to you two weeks ago, obviously, I was pretty fed up with the service. Uh, to be honest with you, it's, it's kind of got worse since then. Um, the, the main issue's been uh, sort of services uh, being cancelled, um, and it seems to be due to driver shortages. That seems to be the key theme, um, certainly this week. Um, this week's been uh, pretty, pretty awful. Have you had lots of trains cancelled then? Uh, yeah, on Wednesday. So I'm, I'm actually working from home today, and I was working from home yesterday, so I've been spared uh, um, the pain. But uh, on Wednesday, which is when I last travelled in, I mean, I got to St Albans at 8.16, and um, they'd already cancelled two services previous to that. And then I had to wait another sort of 30 minutes with trains coming into the station, but I couldn't actually get onto them because they were already packed because of people that have been delayed. Oh, isn't that the earlier. worst thing? When you've been waiting for a train for ages, yep. you see it pull up and there's no yep. breathing room on there. Exactly. So, you know, it's, um, yeah, uh, it's just pretty frustrating, really. And, you know, I've seen this, um, they've they put an apology and explanation on their uh, website now. Um, it's Charles Horton, the CEO's um, um, written something up. And I'm actually pleased that they've They've actually sort of come and actually, you know, said that they've got issues and the rest of it. But I do have a bit of an issue with um, with the statement. So it's it's quite long and it's quite detailed, um, but it, it's lacking sort of the specifics. So they're saying, you know, that they know they've got driver shortages. They're saying they've got 62 in training and they're going to be starting between now and August. Well, my issue is they must know, they must have some idea as to when these drivers will be starting in the new year. You know, between now and, you know, are the going to be starting in August next year, which means we've got another eight months of, uh, of this kind of service? Or, you know, are they, are they going to bring these online, you know, sort of, you know, five in January, ten in February? Um, so I think... As a passenger, I'd, I'd, I'd love to know sort of a bit more detail as to, you know, when they think the service will get better. It, it, you know, apologies are all very well and good, but uh, um, I, I want to, well, the, the main thing I want to know is, you know, when can I expect to see an improvement in the service? James, I tell you what we're going to do. We, we, we're, we're not going to let this one go, obviously. And oh eight four five nine four double five five double five with your stories, please, dear listener. What we will sort out, if it's okay with you, James, is getting some form of recording device to you, so that you could record your journey for us one morning. Okay. Because that would that would be great to kind of hear. Well, <laughs> it would be great to hear you not being able to get your trains because they've been cancelled. <laughs> I, I mean that in the kindest possible way, so that we, we can actually get the boss of Govia on and we can play it to them. Maybe you could yeah. do, have you got what kind of phone have you got, James? Uh, iPhone six. Well, Brilliant. We'll sort. IPhone. We will sort you out with. We'll, we'll tell you what you need to do, and we'll okay. get we'll get a little thing going, James. Listen, we'll speak to you in the new year if that's okay. That's fine. No problem at all. Have a great Christmas, and uh, yeah, we'll, we'll 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 speak to you later, and we'll sort that out. We'll send him out on a little. Um, I like it when we get listeners to do little missions for us. We'll send him out and um, get him to record his. Uh, his train journey for us, and we can hear just how frustrating it is. Brendan's in Leighton Buzzard. Morning, Brendan. Morning. Yeah, d- d- tell us your story. Uh, well, I, I, I travel the London Midland line. Yeah. All the things I've just heard your, your other interviewees say happen on London Midland as well, on a regular basis. And oh. when they first took over from Silverlink, all the problems that tempting passengers have now were exactly the same on London Midland. Did it... Oh, God blimey. Did it improve at all? Uh, slightly. I had to go and see my MP about it. Oh, really? Before, before anything seemed to How long... Oh, this is going to be an awful question for those people using Thameslink. How, how long did it take to improve? Uh, oh, a couple of years. Oh, blimey. <laughs> and what's the service like there now, Brendan? Is it, is it any good? It, it's better, but they still cancel trains at short notice. To be fair to them, sometimes it's, it's not their fault if there's a problem at Watford Junction yeah. signalling, and then you can't blame them. But other times... 
there'll be driver, like say, driver shortages or no staff, or they 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 uh, sort of everything's so tightly run with them. The, the uh, skeleton service. Sort of yeah, if, if one person if one person's down, then it can knacker the whole system. Uh, Brendan, thank you very much. I'm just moving on because I want to speak to Paul in Leegrave. Morning, Paul. Hello, good morning. You're the fellow that tweeted us this morning. I am. I'm so frustrated with the service we've been provided by Govia since they took over, Ian. Go on, tell us, tell us uh, what's been happening for you, Paul. Well, I, I travel into London, I work shifts, and um, it's every single day, whether I get the 4.30 in the morning train... Or get the the 17:30 in the evening train. There's delays, there's cancellations, and all you get back from them is that um, we are sorry for the delays and cancellations. Please be assured we are trying to correct this. But what what the call I just previously said, lack of drivers. I mean, I am under the belief that with First Capital Connect, they used to pay their drivers quite a bit of overtime to cover the shortfall. I don't think Govia are doing anything like that. Well, it's certainly a question we'll, we'll, we'll put to the bosses when we get them on in the new year, and we will get them on. It sounds... Uh, it, it's, I mean, it's, it, I think it's so funny that you, you tweeted us today when we were going to be looking at this anyway. Indeed, yeah. Um, uh, so thank you for that. It, it, it must be really frustrating, because you, you want to know that you can get to work in time, and you want to know that you're going get to get home at a decent time, don't you? It's, it's quite a simple requirement. Well, yeah, I mean, I, I'm a police officer in London, and I rely on the trains to get me into work on time. Um... Obviously, if I'm not at work on time, then uh, my supervisor's asking me questions. And, you know, if this carries on as it is, I'm probably looking at having a management action or some kind of thing taken against me for turning up late all the time. So what, do you, what does your boss say when you, when you go in to the, the, the police station and you're late and he, he says, right, Paul, come and have a word, and you blame it on the trains? Yeah, well, I mean, that, that's happened quite an, a number of times and, you know, they're, they're saying, well, you should make alternative uh, oh. transport arrangements. Well, yeah, I, I sometimes have to drive into work. Um, you know, w- when the weather is against the trains, I fully understand that. But for, for Govia to turn around and say they haven't got a driver for a train to get me and, and other workers into London on a regular basis, I just find that's completely unacceptable. Paul, listen, I, I really appreciate your tweet. I really appreciate your, your, your phone call as well. OK, so we've got a copper who could face disciplinary action because of... Thameslink. Right, we need to keep in touch with Paul. We do. I, I think we should get... Uh, he may not be allowed to because of his, his job, but we should get him to record a little thing as well if he's up for it. Let's, let's, let's find out. We need, we, need, uh, we need your stories, please. 08459 455. 555 is the telephone uh, number if you, uh, if you want to give us uh, a call. You can also text us if it's easier. 81333. Start your text 3CR. If you want to send me an email, uh, ian.lee at bbc.co.uk. Right, let's get the travel news. Here's Russell. Travel news for beds, cards and bugs. BBC Three Counties Radio. I've been keeping an eye on the trains. We're starting to see a few more delays and uh, a couple of cancellations showing. I'm looking at the Luton departure boards at the moment. The 8.40 to Bedford is showing as cancelled and then later on the 9.31 to Bedford is showing as cancelled and the 9.52 uh, to Sutton via Wimbledon cancelled as well. There's one delay worth a mention on there. The 9.08 to Bedford will be 9.36. All the other delays from what I can see look fairly minor uh, to be honest. At Hartford North there's a cancellation the 807 to Moorgate uh, showing us cancelled. Roads not so bad today though there is still a lane closed on the M25 uh, anti-clockwise junctions 24 to 23 from Potters Bar to the A1 at South Mims queues from 25 the turn for the A10. They're still saying that lane should reopen in uh, shortly. Russell Holding BBC Three Counties Radio Thank you, Russell. That invitation is open to all of you, by the way. If you've got an iPhone or a decent phone that's got a good recording thing on it, you can give us... You can just record your journey into work and you being stuck on the platform. I'll give you more details about that after eight. Here we go. Let's get the news. Local and vocal across beds, hearts and bucks. This is BBC Three Counties Radio. It's 8 o'clock, I'm Barry Caffrey. The headlines, ambulance service under pressure. Eight children stabbed to death in Australia and Watford beggar jailed for breaking ASBO. BBC Three Counties Radio. Ambulance workers are gearing up for one of their busiest days of the year. Today is known as Black Friday, the Friday before Christmas when more people drink to excess as the party season reaches a peak. 
This year, the East of England Ambulance Service has been fined £1.5 million for poor response times and poor turnaround times at hospitals. Gary Sanderson is a retired paramedic and the former spokesman for the EEAS. He says people are still calling for an ambulance when it's not appropriate. The priority we need to do is to educate the public how to call for an ambulance. You know, people are still calling ambulances for toothaches, got for earaches, you know, minor ailments. That, that is why the calls are going up. Eight children aged between 18 months and 15 years have been found stabbed to death in the Australian state of Queensland. Their bodies were discovered by police after they received a report that a woman had suffered serious injuries at a house in the city of Cairns. She's been taken to hospital with stab wounds. Detective Inspector Bruno Asnikar is leading the investigation into what happened. The woman in hospital is the mother of uh, most of the children that have been found deceased. Uh, there's still some no identifications being carried out yet uh, formally uh, to, to uh, formally identify who the children are, so we need to be a little careful about that. Um, but at this stage, we believe she's the mother of seven of the children. An aggressive beggar in Watford has been jailed after breaching a two year antisocial behaviour order to stop him from entering the town centre. 35 year old Timothy Hart breached the ASBO by returning to Watford almost immediately after it was issued. Hertfordshire police say he had been arrested previously for several public order and criminal damage offences. Dr. Sean Gabb is the director of the Libertarian Alliance. Begging is a rational choice. If people think they can get 30, 40, 50, 100, 200 pounds, whatever a day, by sitting on a street corner looking pathetic or um, aggressively demanding it from passers-by, that's what they will do. And the thing to do is to stop giving to them. A 20-year-old man has been charged with one count of perverting the course of justice in connection with an ongoing investigation into child sexual exploitation. Mikhail Shah of Prebendal Avenue in Aylesbury was arrested yesterday morning and will be appear at Aylesbury Magistrates Court later today. Thames Valley Police has arrested 117 people for drink driving in the first fortnight of December. 44 of the arrests were in Buckinghamshire. The force is warning people to not drink, while, drink drive rather while drinking. They say they will be breathalysing people during the rest of December, both at night time and in the morning, when people may be travelling into work after a night out. And the weather, any rain will clear away this morning to leave a dry day with some good sunny spells with highs of 8 Celsius, that's 46 in Fahrenheit. And looking ahead to this weekend, it'll be a mainly dry weekend with some good sunny spells. Get the latest news and sport online at bbc.co.uk slash three counties. Opening the doors on the biggest advent calendar in beds, hearts and bucks. Let's see who's behind door number 19. Tony Blackburn. I think probably my favourite Christmas memory was when I was with my grandparents in Worthing in Sussex uh, with my mum and dad and we used to go there and spend Christmas with them. And uh, I think it was the present I had, to be honest with you. I remember it was a bike, my very first uh, two-wheeler bike. And I remember uh, getting it, going yeah, out petty the farthing, road, Tony. and falling off it. Building up to Christmas, only six days to go with BBC Three Counties Radio. Hello, I'm a political reporter, Paul Scoring. I like council meetings and stuff. And I tell massive fibs. Believe me, ladies and gentlemen, when I wish you a very reggae Christmas and a reggae New Year. Thank you, Paul Scoring. Morning, guys. This is Ian Lee, BBC Three County, Counties Radio. Look over there, it's Catherine Boyle. Hiya. Hey, it's busy this morning. It's really busy. We've got, we've come up with a plan of how you can be our eyes and ears on the street. More on that shortly, or on the train platform, to be on. To be, we're talking about Thameslink, and, well, we've, we've had loads of spontaneous complaints this morning about how they're doing a poor service. Your stories, please, 08459 455555. Our beggars, an eyesore, as one of our guests said, and also there is, um, well... A mum who's up in arms because a school has told her she can't post the video of Nativity Play on Facebook. I think it's pretty standard for most schools to not allow you to do that. Yeah. I just wondered whether anyone's had an experience where someone's put a, a video or a picture of their kid up and they've had to t- tell them to take it down. Who's right, who's wrong? 08459 455555. 
Across beds, hearts and bucks. This is BBC Three Counties Radio. 08459 four double five five double five is the telephone number. Now the NHS is stealing itself one of the busiest nights of its year uh, as uh, after the a day after Dr Anthony Marsh announced he'll be stepping down as Chief Exec of the East of England Ambulance Service. The fact that so many of us will be off our mash at Christmas parties will put extra strain on what's an already stretched service. Remember this year the East of England Ambulance Service was fined one and a half million pounds for poor response and turnaround times. Well we sent our reporter Sophie Solaria out with paramedics Nick Currington and Becca Tolhurst to see what it's like on a busy Friday night shift in Luton. OK, so um, first job is um, a patient that's had a termination today and she's got a PV bleed. It's a hot two, so that means that um, we're going on blue lights to the patient to transport them to hospital. OK, legs up, please. We're going to pop the needle in your arm. OK, guys, it's now... 10 past 9 and we've just finished our first job so why do you think it took so long to have to sort that one out? Um, the problem we had here was that the it was a bit of a language barrier so what we had there was that the communication between us and the family and it was it was quite sort of hit and miss I don't know it, it, it just really drew the whole job out I join now by Simon King, Senior Locality Manager for Luton Area. And Simon, we'll, we'll, we'll get on to what it's like out on the street in a second, but we were talking about um, uh, Anthony Marsh, Chief Exec of the East of England Ambulance Service, stepping down. He's still in the job, isn't he? You've, you've reminded me. He is, yeah, he's still there. So he, but he, he will step down once a replacement is found. Is that what's happening? So the trust's intention is that in 2015 they'll go out to recruit uh, a chief executive yep. uh, and until then he'll continue to drive performance locally. OK. okay. Uh, now, the case that we heard about with Sophie there took two hours to, to, to sort. I, I guess that can be the problem when you're out and about. Some calls, it's simple, you pick up and you take them to a hospital. Some you can deal with. Some you could be stuck there for quite a long period of time. That's quite right. Um, I think the thing we need to be most grateful for is the calibre of our staff we've got working in Beds and Hearts. My area is where we're sitting now, in Luton South Beds. Uh, Nick and Rebecca are some of my guys, and they're fantastic at what they do. Uh, And they have to be generalists. So some of the things they do are very time critical. Some of them just take a lot of working out about what the best outcome is. Is there a problem um, with with language barriers? Because, of course, living where we are, there are so many different uh, um, languages around. Not everybody speaks English. I guess that can slow the simple process of diagnosis down, can't it? Well, it can do, Ian, but there is some international language um, that you can use. Uh, yeah. So when you get your stethoscope out, most people know what it is you need them to do. Yeah. Your blood pressure cuff out is similar. And we do have access often to relatives who are there with them, or we use a thing called language line when we need to. Uh, it has been a tough year for, for East of England, um, with uh, fines uh, for delays and waiting times, a, a lack of paramedics. Are things improving, do you think? Uh, Yes. Uh, I think your reporter hopefully would have found from Nick and Rebecca when he came out things feel much more positive on the ground right. especially in the local area um, we, one of Anthony Marsh's key, objective, key objectives was to recruit 400 new staff, yep. uh, we're more like 600 mm. uh, in this area where we're sitting now we've now got no vacancies at all we're putting out adi- additional cover uh, our response times are improving week on week, in fact currently the East of England Ambulance Service in terms of responding to the most time critical calls is is leading the country. It's still flawed, though, isn't it? I mean, there was a story the other week of, of some drivers leaving, um, uh, the paramedics, excuse me, to, not to demean them, leaving uh, a, a, a dead person so that they wouldn't go over their shifts and they wouldn't break their shifts. So th- there are still problems within it, aren't there? Um, I think there will always be room for improvement. Uh, that's a very serious story you're talking about and mm. something we've got a big investigation ongoing. Um, good news for people in Bedfordshire and Hertfordshire is that's not in this particular area. Yeah. But it is something, yeah. and an isolated case that we're looking at at the moment. What Friday, it was, it was Black Friday, the Friday before Christmas. Everyone's um, out on the lash. It's Christmas parties. It's the last day of work. It must be a, a nightmare for the, the paramedics. Uh, hard work. People in this area and the ambulances are used to hard work. Uh, It's always hard graft, um, but they thrive on it and enjoy it. It is frustrating, Mm. and we would ask people out there to consider what they're doing tonight. We want them to go out and enjoy themselves and have a great time with their friends, but we also want them to do that safely. Mm. So we would ask them to think about what it is you're doing. Are you going out tonight to do something which is 
likely, if you think about it now, to result in needing the emergency department or the ambulance to sort you out, patch you up and get you home. Is it frustrating? And I think, I know you're, you're going to give me the company line, but it must be frustrating when you, you, you're you going out and you're dealing with real emergencies and just drunk idiots who've got into a fight or fallen down some steps, and you know, the, the, where it's kind of alcohol and drug based. Um, but I was listening to what Gary said earlier on, and I suppose I would uh, uh, concur with what he's saying. It is frustrating for our guys, but they remain professional. Yeah. Um, whoever calls us, if we need to respond, we'll go and we'll deal effectively. Gary Sanderson, who we were talking to earlier, su- suggested that it might be worth looking into to charging people if they make inappropriate 999 calls. He gave the example of some woman whose uh, husband was drunk on the sofa and she wanted him carried upstairs to bed. Would, would you go along with that? Well, I think we do need to find a way of stemming the flow... Uh, of calls that may not be time critical. Um, that's a massive political discussion, isn't it? And one of the things that we talk about on a regular basis is the problem is who phones for the ambulance? Because often it's not the individual, it's a mm. third party. Mm. So who would pay? Mm. Well, yeah, exactly. And there is always the danger that it would scare some people off calling for, for genuine yeah. uh, reasons as well, because they're worried that they, they couldn't pay. Um, th- th- staff morale has been low this year. You, you say it's up. Um, what, has, what has driven it up, do you think? Uh, several things. I think our, our chief executive um, is very good at the nuts and bolts of running an effective ambulance service. Well, he's, he's, he's responsible for about four million quid's worth of fines, isn't he, with, with East of England and with West Midlands. So not brilliantly responsible. So the fine structure um, yeah. was put in place before he arrived. Um, his plan, his, his key objective is to hugely increase the number of staff we've got. Um, that's the, the, the biggest single thing that we need. Mm. Um, some of the other things that we've done very locally, we've introduced new rotors so there are more people on time or at work at the time that we need them. Mm. Um, and we've just seen a, a big increase in the positivity of our staff. Mm. We've introduced more clinical development and training and a fantastic mentorship scheme in the local area in Luton and South Beds. If he's done such a good job, Anthony Marsh, why is he stepping down? Um, I don't think I can comment on that. At the right. moment, as far as I'm aware, he isn't stepping down. Uh, he was asked to come for up to two years to uh, turn us around. Oh, so the, the, because the papers say that he's, he's definitely stepping down, doesn't it? Are the papers... Well, there's a surprise. Papers make... The boss of two scandal-hit ambulance services, says the mail, is stepping down from one of them after just 11 months in the job. Uh, it, Dr Anthony Marsh will leave the second role as soon as a replacement is found. So my understanding is the story about the urgency of the situation ar- arose in social media a couple of days ago. Right. Uh, and our, uh, my understanding is that in 2015, we'll be, uh, the TDL will be running a, uh, okay. a recruitment for, a, for a, a chief executive. What can people do to make um, the, the job of paramedics easier tonight and over the Christmas period? Yeah, thanks, Ian. That's, that's the one thing I really wanted to communicate. Yeah. Um, to help the, the, the service operate as effectively as possible, we would ask them to think about... What's the right service for me? Yeah. Is it a time-critical emergency? Phone 999 and you will get the best service uh, in the east of England in beds and hearts. If it's not a time-critical emergency, think about something else. Um, 111 is a good option. Mm. If you phone 111 and it turns out you've not quite got it right and you do need an ambulance, they'll, they'll transfer you, out, you straight yeah. through to us. Um, probably the best thing you can do right now is to prepare yourself. If you've got a condition that you need medication, think about have you got enough medication for the next week or so. Mm. Um, if you think you might need to access services because you've got a condition, um, do a bit of research. What's my GP's out of hours number? Uh, do I have friends and family who could help me out for getting into trouble? Just get prepared for it. But be safe and be warm and look after yourself and your friends during the festive period. I don't envy you lot at all. You know, I, there have been very few occasions, I'm trying to think three times, four times in my life where I've had to call 999 in various different parts of the country. And, this, you know, it's, it, the service has always been spot on. You know, the, what those, those men and women uh, have to deal with and what they put up with, I, I don't envy them at all. Simon, really nice to, to see you. Thank you very Thank much you. for coming in. I, I wish uh, everybody working on the ambulance service uh, the very best of luck. Fingers crossed it's not too bad. Uh, tonight, and um, there aren't too many idiots out there as well to make things worse. Thank you very much for coming in. 08459 455 555. Travel news for beds, hearts, and bugs. BBC Three Counties Radio.
Well, we've been hearing on the programme this morning about problems with some of the Thameslink train services. I'm looking at the Luton departure boards at the moment. I can see the 8.40 to Bedford is cancelled, the 9.08 to Bedford is cancelled, the 9.31 to Bedford is cancelled, and the 9.52 to Sutton via Wimbledon is cancelled. There are a number of delays on the departure boards there uh, as well. Uh, plus, uh, Virgin trains say up to 20-minute delays. It's a problem further up, actually, between Birmingham and Coventry. It's a signalling problem, but they reckon up to 20-minute delays are possible. And they say it's also affecting London, Midland and cross-country services, although they are, they say, getting back to normal as a result of that. Thankfully, the roads haven't been quite so bad. they enclosure on the M25, though, anti-clockwise, junctions 24 to 23 from Potter's Bar to the A1 at South Mims after an accident. They've been saying for about the last three quarters of an hour that they're going to leave, open that lane closure soon. They haven't yet. Traffic's still queuing all the way back to junction 25 at the turn for the A10. Uh, There's a queue on the M11 heading into London from junction 5 uh, Loughton. Also, some uh, delays around Hitchin by the looks of things just busy on the A602, uh, plus the bit of the A602 that goes on to the A1M at Junction 8 at Stevenage. Looks like there's a little bit of a queue as well, Ian. Russell Holding, BBC Three Counties Radio. Thank you very much. 8.16, it is Friday the 19th of December. I'm Ian Lee. These are your headlines on BBC Three Counties Radio. Oh, I'm shocked and uh, indeed flattered. Jonathan Vernon-Smith has turned up early. This is unprecedented. <laughs> well, I, I'm, I'm, I'm lost for words. These are your headlines. The East of England Ambulance Service is preparing for what it is expected to be one of the busiest days of the year, and it's reminding people not to call for an ambulance unless it's absolutely necessary to do so. And eight, eight children aged between 18 months and 15 years have been found murdered in the Australian state of Queensland. BBC Three Counties Radio. This is Ian Lee on BBC Three Counties Radio. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry to draw attention to it, but normally at this point I'm thinking, where is <laughs> JVS? Where is as you, you tinker away with your big question upstairs, you chisel away all the mm. excessive words and you get it just right, or you're just upstairs nattering, well, I don't know. We, we had a prompt morning this morning, oh. because uh, a large part of my programme will be dedicated to uh, my little journey last week with the traffic cops of Oh, blimey, OK. So between 10 and 11, hear yeah. what happened. It was such fun. So it's pre-recorded, yeah. so it means you can, you can put your feet up and have a smoke. Uh, uh, re- no, I'll be I'll be putting my feet out and listening. Oh. It's a good listen. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it is, if I say so myself. I can't stand listening to myself. Really? In my head, I sound posh. On the radio, I sound like a cockney. Oh, yes, very common. Sorry? Um... So uh, from ten this morning, I'll be going out with the uh, with the traffic cops, and you'll hear what happened. Lovely. We arrested people on mobile phones. Yeah, we arrested. Well, we didn't arrest, but we stopped people who were on mobile phones. Speeders. Did you taser any? We any did mobile arrest phone a man. Users? A man was threatened with taser. Oh, you'll hear that bet later. That got you moist, it, uh, <laughs> didn't it? Yeah. That's your favourite, favourite thing. It's like your Christmas wish come true. <laughs> it, uh, it, it all happened, and you'll hear the full report from 10 this Wonderful. morning. I shall certainly um, look forward to reading the, the, the views online. I'm, I'm busy with 10. Uh, oh, that's not very nice, is it? It's my last show before Christmas. Hey! Wait, don't you want to hear it? Well, well, actually, uh, Tim will be here with the best of next week, and we've got, uh, I'll tell you what, oh, God. we asked the listeners to suggest some of their most memorable moments. Brilliant. Some hilarious moments. Oh, do you good. remember the guy who phoned the consumer programme with my brain? Uh, I do remember that. He'll that appear. was uh, almost as good as yeah. the fellow that had gone on a specific dating website. Uh, hang on a minute. Specific date. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I do remember that. that. My favourite one. <laughs> yes, ever. I do. yes. Ever. Right. Okay. So, and what was the name of this website? Oh my gosh. <laughs> Hopefully, uh, hopefully they'll be able to dig that one out. Um, we've, we've got some hilarious. Good, moments. I look forward to that. Excellent stuff indeed. What's on at nine? Coming on at nine this morning on the big phone in. Do you think it's good that obese people now have the same rights as the disabled? Do you see this story? I did see this story. Yeah, we, did, we didn't have. We were going to get round to it. And we never had time. So the so European busy. Court has ruled that a man who was sacked for being too fat to do his job should be considered disabled and therefore the victim of unfair dismissal. 25 stone, Carsten Kaltoft, was employed as a childminder for 15 years, but four years ago was told he was surplus to requirement due to the lack of children needing care. However, he brought a discrimination case against his employer, arguing he'd only been sacked as he was a larger man. 
The court's decision now means that if a person's weight hinders the full and effective participation of that person in professional life on an equal basis with other workers, then obesity can fall within the concept of disability. I'm just looking for a picture of him. I found him. I wouldn't want him looking after my kids. And I tell you why, Mm -hmm. if they ran off in a shopping centre, he couldn't catch them. (laughs) And I mean, I mean that seriously, Kath. You, 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 and I mean that seriously. You see, he wouldn't. He's a big lad. Mm. He wouldn't be able to. He wouldn't be able to catch your girls. He wouldn't be able to keep up with my kids. No, no not at all. So no, I think that anyway. Go on. Well, in short. If you get fat and you can't do your job, it would appear you'll be protected in the same way as a disabled person. Which, of course, means we are now paving the way to anybody who is classed as uh, as morbidly obese being given the same rights as disabled people. So, disabled parking spaces, um, all kinds of disability rights on public transport and Mm. work. But is that a good thing? Do you think it's good that obese people now have the same rights as the disabled? From nine this morning, I'd like us to debate this, and I'd love your view on 08459 four double five five double five. Every weekday from three. Is the best thing just to run away to a hotel somewhere? A little bit of fun. I've got a feeling that this argument unfolds in every house. The latest news. New regulations allowing parents to share the care of their child in the first year after birth come into force today. Personal genome service claims to offer access to more than 100 pieces of genetic information about your health. A little bit of everything. Because if you haven't got baby Jesus and nativity, then it's not a nativity, is it? Let me bring you up to speed with some local news. Good afternoon. Welcome to the programme. What's your comment? We'll talk films and science fiction. Our fascination with science fiction films. Roberto Peroni on BBC Three Counties Radio. Across beds, hearts and bucks. This is Ian Lee. BBC Three Counties Radio. OK, well, this show is kind of falling into place all by itself. Um, we were going to be talking about Thameslink this morning. Uh, we're going to get a quick update from uh, James Montgomery from Hemel, who we spoke to two weeks ago, and he got in touch and said, you know what, since those two weeks, it's got worse. And so we're going to do that. Uh, he was so unhappy with the service since the Govia takeover that he, he called us and uh, we wanted to see how things were progressing. Well, then, by coincidence, we had um, uh, a tweet from uh, Paolo, Paul who said, please announce the fiasco that is Thameslink this morning, delays and cancellations your listeners need to know. Then we got a phone call from Mary, who's a yep. teacher in Luton, but she was standing on a platform in West Hampstead and saying she was fed up of being in this situation where train after train is cancelled and she can't rely on being in work on time anymore. Paul's a copper, by the way, who's uh, in trouble of um, getting a right royal rollicking from his boss and getting a mark against his name because he's um, he, he, he keeps turning up Late. Howard has sent us a picture of. Um, I'm not. I'm, I'm assuming this is loose. I'm not sure. The sign 7:54, and it says the 7:53 uh, train is cancelled. Well, anyway, so we were, you know, uh, talking about this, and um, we've had. Uh, uh, well, Roger Perkins from Thameslink has got in touch. Good morning, Roger. Good morning. First of all, Roger, thank you for phoning us. We were going to give you a call no. later on this morning, and you yeah. called us first. That's never oh. happened before. I have, I have rang you a few times before when we know we're going to have some disruption. Oh, no, exactly, like but we've, we've never had, no. uh, we've never had uh, someone, you know, kind of get in touch before we manage to. So uh, I really appreciate that. Thank you very much. Well, What's I'm, going on? I, well, I want to thank you because I've been... Well, not I, the company has been um, trying to get across the message to people to explain to them about what is going on because the service, quite frankly, hasn't been good enough. We know that. Obviously, all our station teams know that. Anyone who's driving the trains, anyone who works this company knows that. And we need to explain to people what's going on. We've got information on our website. Um, we've had recordings going out at stations asking people to have a look at that to see. But um, thankfully, you're, you're here and you can help us, um, help me. Go on, so, so what's, what's going on? What's happening? Um, right, well, first of all, I mean, this morning in terms of delays, because I know you were talking about that earlier and you read out a list of, of the delays, um, and we've got signalling problems um, at, uh, at uh, Hassocks and between Hassocks and Preston Park and also at Water Beach on Thameslink. So that's, um, you know, uh, sorry, at, between Hassocks and Preston Park and Burgess Hill and Withelsfield on Thameslink and at Water Beach on Great Northern. So that's had a bit of an impact. But the thing that people are really noticing at the moment is the number of cancellations that we've had, specifically on Thameslink, but also occasionally on Great Northern as well, out of Kings Cross Moorgate. And the reason for that is quite simply, we don't have enough drivers for our trains at the moment. 
and I can. I thought you were going to then ask me why. The reason for that is that um, on Thameslink, um, and we took over in, in September, um, and um, we've got, since then, we've had a large number of training uh, days which our drivers need to go through for the Thameslink program works so that they can drive trains on a different route. Um, we've uh, also got new trains, which I spoke to you about a couple of weeks ago, which are now on the route, and more and more are coming on, and our drivers need to be trained in that. Um, that means that um, we've been asking our drivers to work rest days and overtime, and they've been very flexible helping us do that so that we can release drivers to go on this very important training, without which this very important improvement work at London Bridge can't take place. I mean, we actually have to have the drivers trained, otherwise the timetable from January simply won't work. The, the station staff we... are telling listeners that the Christmas rotors have been mucked up. No, the Christmas rotors have not been mucked up. Why, why are station staff tell it, saying that then? I, I, I've not heard that. Um, we've been putting out uh, messages to our staff, and I'll certainly make sure that we put out more again to explain the situation. I mean... <laughs> The question people say, and I've heard them say this, is, well, we'll just get more drivers then. Um, we have, we are getting more drivers. We're currently training up another 62. Um, we've got um, more coming on. We've got another 89 we're recruiting. We're recruiting more trainers so we can ramp up the number. Give us, but give takes, us a date. It takes, it and it, takes Give us a date because this is what people want. They want yeah. a date. They want to know when it's going to be, when it's going to be a decent service people that you can be proud of. Things will get much better in the new year because at the moment um, our drivers have been working rest days and overtime to help make the time for this, uh, this training. But obviously we're reaching the festive period now and that, adds, that puts extra strain. Um, uh, Why? On, because we're depending upon drivers to a large degree to work rest days and overtime, to work on the days that they could take off. Why? Which because we don't have enough drivers, and that's why we're... Why? <laughs> this is the thing reason we don't... I know, good questions. And the reason for that is that when we took over in September, there simply weren't enough. There were recruitment processes in place, but not enough. We've ramped it up, but we can't just turn on a magic switch and buy in a few drivers from here and there. They take up to a year to train. How long does it take to train a driver? It, can, it takes uh, over a year. If you take somebody off the street, it takes about 14 months. If you take somebody from a different company, it's six months. So we've got, we've got, a, we've got 62 in training now. We've got another 89 coming on. We're taking on more training. So it's going to take over a year. So they won't be ready till September, October next year. We're going to have, we're going to have more coming on stream in uh, January, February, March, um, who are already in training. So we've got people coming through. The situation will get back to normal come the new year. It's specifically, you get more pressure in terms of um, holidays and uh, the festive period and whether people were prepared to work rest days and overtime. We're getting drivers loads have of... been, drivers have been phenomenally flexible okay. and helpful. Well, in, but, but in passengers have been service. phenomenally it's... let down, haven't they? We've got, let me just read a text at random. We've had loads of texts and tweets about this. Mm. Tim says, Morning, my daughter's in a West End show. She nearly missed a show because there wasn't a driver available. Since this new company took over, the service has got much, much worse with late trains and cancellations. Well, the, since we took over, we've had to start a training programme for this work that's um, taking place at London Bridge. We've had 900 training days in three months on Thameslink. On Great Northern, we simply need more. It's not about training. It's simply we need more drivers. And we are recruiting. We've got the biggest recruitment campaign ever known. The thing is, though, the, 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 yeah, exactly. You, you bid. Do you think you've bitten off more than you ch you can chew and 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 undercut maybe too much? Because you you bidded for a franchise, you put in a bid for a franchise, and you won, and yet you're not able to deliver the service. All of these um, all of these changes are happening irrespective of who is running the um, of who's running the franchise. So the improvements at London Bridge. Um, and the situation with the number of drivers that we have over on Great We've not even got to the London Bridge situation where, where trains don't stop there for three years. That's not even happening yet. This is just people who want to get to and from work and, and know they can rely on their train times. And they can't. Train after train is being cancelled. And when that third train arrives, obviously it's full up and they can't get on it. It isn't good enough, is it? Well, what we're doing, it's, it's not good enough for our passengers. 
So what we're doing is we've got a resilience plan, which means that we're suspending all non-essential driver release. We're double manning our, our driver resource management team, um, which who are the people who um, pull together those rosters. A cop is going to get a mark against his name. We have available so that we can assign them to those services in such a way to minimise the disruption that's caused. A cop is going to get a mark against his name for turning up late. That's terrible. It's it's frankly it's not good enough. We know it's not good enough. We are really really working hard to give people the the best service that we can under the circumstances and to tell people and to explain to them why and to give them a commitment that we will improve the situation give us a date in we'll january that we can speak time. to you again roger that that, uh, that that you can guarantee it, that things will be better as, we, as, as soon as we come back from the break it will be better after the after the christmas new year period i can tell you that but it won't the the full time the full long-term fix won't be in place until we have been able to bring in all those drivers that we need to be in a position where we no longer have to complete which will be when on rest day working which will be when that's going to take well if we got periods that it's going to take a year bring in a full complement so you are no longer but the situation will be right. back to normal come the new year you, you, a okay specific situation because of training that's happening right now okay and what we're going to do over because we'll be running those services from january right. the 5th okay what we're going to do then january uh, let's give you let, let's say january the 5th can we speak to you and we'll speak to customers to see if it's got got any better and i'm assuming um that you'll be giving compensation to to people who's uh, who have been delayed or held up Absolutely. If people are delayed, then they can apply for um, compensation. We can do it online. They can do that. What um, would be the requirements uh, of that? What, what, if, 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 what would be the requirements to get compensation? What, what criteria would they have to meet? Anybody who's trained, uh, who's been delayed by over 30 minutes is entitled to, um, to compensation okay. on their train ticket. And they can do that. They can set up an account and they can do multiple claims as well. Here we go. James, uh, who we've been speaking to, says, uh, suggests this on Twitter. Thameslink should give season ticket holders a rebate and cancel the 2.5% fare increase. Yeah. OK. And um, like I said, we've got... There is... A, there is um, a process in place of compensating people when they're delayed. So, so season ticket holders will get a rebate. There's no rebate. There's compensation. So, if you need, if you've been delayed by over thirty minutes, then yeah. you can claim, and it's it's it, we've made it as easy as we can. And how much can they claim for the full for the full journey? You can um, over the uh, between over thirty minutes. Um, between 30 and 59 minutes, it's 50% of your journey. Over 59, it's the full, the full fare. And the 2.5% fare increase, that's, that's going to go ahead regardless, even though you're not providing a, a, a good enough service? That is the... the that, that applies to um, season tickets, any time, walk-up fares, the majority of the tickets that we sell. It's the rate of inflation, so it's a flat fee, um, and it's across the board. It's regulated by government. Do you um, think that's it, fair? Do you think it's fair that, that, that there'll be a 2.5% increase on a service that, that, that is, um, well, is, is embarrassing? Well, people can claim compensation for the service that yeah, they Yeah, but the 2.5% right, increase, do you, do, think that, that, do you think that's fair, and Roger? The, and the 2.5% is introduced through, um, it's a regulated fare. Yeah. Do you think it's fair? And do I think it's fair? Well, I think it's fair if we're providing a service for people, which we are. Well, you, and but you're not, though, Roger. That's the thing. You're not. And, well, and people can still claim. I, I know what you're saying, and I understand, and I know you want me to say, no, it's not, or yes. No, I'd, I'd, I'd like... I, 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 just listen, we've really had so many people... Say, we have so many people who are angry, Roger. Do, do you think it's fair that, that, that this 2.5% fare increase is going ahead on a service that is, is, at best, very, very poor? I think it's right that the, the rate of... Um, that the ticket price rises in line with the rate of inflation and stays at that rate um, to keep it in line, which in fact is a, is a, is a real term freeze. But um, what is important is that people do know that they can claim compensation if they're delayed by over 30 minutes through, through the process that we've got, and then that gives people the compensation. Now, the important thing that people want to know is, is the service going to get better? Yes, it is. It's going to get better come the new year specifically. We're working really hard to make sure that we minimise the disruptions we've got. Uh, in the meantime, it is important that people know that, yes, we do have cancellations. Today on Thames Inc. route, it is, um, it, it's, it's not been um, as bad as it has been. It's been um, two trains this morning have been cancelled, but we've had the delays because of signal problems. 
but on Great Northern Route, <clears throat> um, we are expecting some more cancellations this evening, um, and uh, we'll be putting messages up on our website, so please could people check on our website. Yeah. We will be honest and open with people, as I hope you believe I have been. We do want to explain to people what's happening and why it's happening. Um, and we give that commitment to continue to do that. Roger, I always appreciate the fact that you, you come on, and uh, yes, I believe that you are being honest. Listen, have a great Christmas. We'll speak to you on January Thank the 5th. You. Thank you very much. Thank you, Roger. 08459 four double five five double five. We're late. Let's get the travel. Travel news for beds, cards and bugs. BBC Three Counties Radio. Well, let's start with those cancellations. Then I'm looking at the Bedford departure boards. The 9.54 to Brighton is cancelled. Uh, Luton, the following cancellations. 8.40 to Bedford, 9.08 to Bedford, 9.31 to Bedford and the 9.52 to Sutton uh, via Wimbledon plus the 10.18 to Brighton later on cancelled and the 10.24 to Bedford cancelled. So still a lot of cancellations still showing on the trains. There are a few delays as well. The delays don't look quite so uh, bad but uh, obviously a number of cancellations leads to overcrowding on uh, subsequent services. Roads, thankfully, haven't been quite so bad, though we still have a lane closed in on the M25. Anti-clockwise junctions 24 to 23 from Potters Bar to the A1 at South Mims. Queues from 25 at Enfield. Russell Holding, BBC Three Counties Radio. Across beds, hearts and bugs. This is BBC Three Counties Radio. It's 25 to 9 with the headlines. I'm Barry Caffrey. The East of England Ambulance Service is urging people not to call out for an ambulance unless it is absolutely necessary to do so. Today is known as Black Friday, the Friday before Christmas, when more people drink to excess as the party season reaches a peak. Thameslink trains say the main reason for delays and cancellations into London is because there are not enough drivers. There are also a variety of signal failures which have been affecting services and causing delays. Police in Australia say eight children have been found dead at a house in the coastal city of Cairns in northern Queensland. A woman believed to be their mother has been taken to hospital with stab wounds. An aggressive beggar in Watford has been jailed after breaching a two-year antisocial behaviour order to stop him from entering the town centre. 35-year-old Timothy Hart breached the ASBO by returning to Watford almost immediately after it was issued. Hertfordshire police say his, he had been arrested previously for several public order and criminal damage offences. And women could be allowed to serve in frontline combat roles by 2016. Military sources have said there's a real desire to end the ban, but more research is needed to be done. And the weather, any rain will clear away this morning to leave a dry day with some good sunny spells and highs of 8 Celsius. That's 46 in Fahrenheit. Three Counties Sports. BBC Three Counties Radio. Watford are likely to field a similar team to last week as they head to Reading in the Championship tomorrow. The Hornets will come up against opposition who have just appointed Steve Clark as manager. Not an ideal time to play them, according to Watford boss Slavisa Djukanovic. Really, it's not good news for, for us always uh, uh, after this change, especially first uh, first game. It's uh, in Spain, say, new, new coach, new win. I expect it's not going to happen like uh, like this, but the uh, level of the attention of uh, Reading going to be in the highest possible level. MK Dons will be without the injured Ben Reeves again as they take on Oldham in League One. Luton Town have skipper Steve McNulty back from suspension for tomorrow's visit of Newport in League Two. Ahead of Christmas next week, manager John Still has been discussing whether his players will get more time off. Day off? No, when do we get a day off then? Monday or Tuesday? Why? No day off. Day off Sunday. No day off Sunday. There'll be a you know, normal time off for recovery. But by and large, nothing changed. Stevenage could be without the services of Charlie Lee and Darius Charles for the League One game against Exeter tomorrow. Borough have been hit hard with injuries this season, but manager Graham Westley will not be looking for players in the January transfer window. What we're looking for is to actually get some stability. Um, stability is a massive thing in football. Uh, you look at the years when we've had success, it's not been about bringing loads and loads of players in, it's been about developing the players that we've got, bringing those players along. And you know, They don't need to play in constant fear of their places, they need to know that they're believed in and they need to know that uh, you know, their development is top of our priority list. We've got some good players here. 
Wickham Wanderers head to Accrington Stanley aiming to preserve their lead at the top of League 2. Liverpool striker Mario Balotelli will miss Sunday's Premier League fixture at home to Arsenal after the Football Association banned him for one match as punishment for a picture he posted on social media. Balotelli has since apologised for the post which was seen to be anti-Semitic and also contained racist references. Alex Stewart is the latest former England cricket captain to call for Alistair Cook to resign as captain of the one-day side. Stewart told the BBC that Owen Morgan should lead the team at next year's World Cup in Australia and New Zealand. And those are the sports headlines. I'm back with a news bulletin at nine o'clock. There's a that keeps on calling. What are you doing? She's planking. She's planking. What are you planking for, you I plank? I do a plank throughout the whole song. This is a two and a half minute song. No yes. human being can plank for that long. I bet Brendan could. It. Brendan? Upstairs, oh, he could, yeah. yeah. Buff. I don't Buff. think I could do it if I put my mind to it. No, it's not your mind, yeah. it's your body. Yeah, well. It's your body. All these sports people that say, oh, it's, it's, oh, it's mental. No, it's not. It's physical. It's sports. It's your muscles. It's your muscles, isn't it, Just? It is. Hey! Hey! Hey, Just, you're right, fella. You're right. Hey! How you doing, fella? Hey, I'm very happy this morning. Why is that, mate? Well, following my serial killer's profile <laughs> earlier on this morning. And boy, oh, boy, it was, it was, it's in the, it's in the podcast, podcast if you missed you. it. It was good. I've just Thank received you. a phone call from my agent, uh, the Crime and Investigation Channel, um, are looking to book me for voiceovers. Oh, come on. I'm being deadly serious. Deadly <laughs> serious. Oh, so we did. <laughs> deadly serious. Are you going to have to use the serial killer room, though, in three counties? Yes. Think, yeah. uh, for those that missed that, uh, people coming up to me this morning on the street saying, have yeah. you really got a serial killer profile office? I yep. have. It yeah, has it's a true. phone, a computer. And um, the British Book of Hit Singles. Yeah, exactly. And a... <laughs> An echo effect. An echo effect machine, yeah. Oh, hang, on, hang on, The littlest hobo, of course, playing because we're talking about beggars. Mm. You see, I'm clever, and I've literally just made that so connection myself. So why do you myself. normally play it, then? For fun? To, to, I was teasing up this story about beggars. We've been talking about beggars, Just. There's a, mm. a, a fella in uh, Watford who's been given an ASBO for, for begging, hassling people, doing his toilets. He's been jailed. He's been he jailed. was given the ASBO and he ignored it. Yeah, and uh, we spoke to uh, Dr Sean Gabb, director of the Libertarian Alliance, a great guest. Yeah. He's going to be... You're going to hear a lot from that guy in 2015. That's my prediction. <laughs> and he said that beggars are an eyesore. Yep. Wowzers. Which I thought was very harsh. Yes. Um, I actually spoke to a beggar this morning. Wow. Um, I haven't got that on tape because it was so brief. Um, <laughs> what did he say? I think we know what he said. It was actually a lady. Wow. And she told me in no uncertain terms to go away. Good for her. And I said, well, you know, w- w- what do you think about people nowadays? Are they giving you enough money to get by? She said, they are just too tight nowadays. Wow. Her words, not mine. Um, so I've been asking for people's opinions this morning about beggars people's perception of beggars and would they ever give money to one when I see a beggar on the street I think to myself that person's homeless they need money and there's every chance I would give them some money but some of the views this morning are just absolutely incredible here's what people had to say this morning about beggars would they give money no, I wouldn't know tell me why because then you can't really trust these beggars at all what do you mean you can't trust them it's like um, some days you can give money to a beggar and they'll just turn around and get up and jump straight into their cars and you, you feel like 
why, why am I giving what money does to that someone ever happened? who already has enough of it already and they just want an easy way of earning money without right. going to work? So these people are fraudsters, in your opinion? In my opinion, yeah. All of them? <laughs> I mean, there could be people on the streets genuinely who are homeless and they need money from people like you. Well, if, if they do need money and they're homeless, then it's nothing wrong with trying to get a job and earning money the right way instead of sitting around and trying to take someone else's money when they're trying to feed their families and do better for themselves. Um, it's nothing you can do about it, really. I mean, people are in that situation, aren't they, sir? What, what can you do? Would you give money to a beggar? I wouldn't necessarily give them money. I mean, if they're on the streets needing food, well, I'd rather buy them... A sandwich or... That's interesting. So have you done that in the past, then? You've actually gone and, and given them food? Yeah, well, I was going to a restaurant once in Brighton, it was, and there was one just outside of a restaurant, so I was going in there anyway, so we bought them a burger, took out to them and gave them that rather than the money instead. Wow. I wouldn't give money to anyone who's got better clothes than me. If they've got £500 Reeboks waiting on here, <laughs> I'm not giving them money. Are, are you telling me you've seen beggars on the streets wearing £500 pairs of shoes? I've seen people on the streets begging who have been wearing shoes that cost more than all the clothes I've currently got wearing at the moment. No, he hasn't. The ones that sit next to cash points, I don't give money to. Those are, those are the dodgy ones. What? If they're sitting next to cash points, that means they're basically waiting there to make you feel as guilty as possible. And it's, it's ones where you're sitting... The ones that are on the roads where they're, like, say, when you're walking down to the mall on their own, just begging for money, I'll give money to them. But the people who sit next to cash points, I've seen one in London, because I travel in from London every day, he's been at the same cash point for must be six months. It's a good place to go, though, if you're yeah. a beggar, isn't it? Oh, yeah. He's probably earning more than I am. <laughs> a week, so. <laughs> Some of the views this morning are absolutely <laughs> fascinating. Thanks for your time. Merry no Christmas. Problem. Take care, Leroy. Merry Christmas, Justin, mate. thank you for that. We'll come back to you after this. Travel news for beds, cards and bugs. BBC Three Counties Radio. Well, we've been hearing on the show this morning about the problems with Thameslink train services. A sea of red on the departure boards. Lots of cancelled trains at the Bedford departure boards. I can see the 8.54 uh, to Brighton cancelled, the 9.54 uh, to Brighton cancelled and the 10.24 to Brighton cancelled. Luton departure boards uh, show the following uh, cancellations. The 8.40 to Bedford, 9.08 to Bedford, the 9.18 to Brighton, 9.31 to Bedford, 9.50 to Sutton uh, via Wimbledon and the 10.18 uh, to Brighton and we'll throw in the 10.24 to Bedford uh, for good measure as well. Uh, roads thankfully haven't been quite so bad, a little bit lighter than normal today. They've finally reopened that lane on the M25 in anti-clockwise junctions 24 to 23 from Potter's Bar to the A1 at South Mims. Traffic still very slow towards there though from junction 25 the A10 Enfield turn. It's busy here and there elsewhere but if anything probably lighter than normal to be honest. This afternoon I suspect will be busier than normal. Russell Holding, BBC Three Counties Radio. Thank you, Russell. Right, it's 8.47. Blimey, we've got so much to cram in towards the end of the show as well. 8.47, these are your headlines on BBC Three Counties Radio. The East of England Ambulance Service is urging people not to call for an ambulance unless it's absolutely necessary to do so. And Thameslink trains say the main reason for delays and cancellations on their services into and out of London is because there are not enough drivers. Let's get the weather. Here's Georgina. Beds, hearts and bucks weather. BBC Three Counties Radio. Hello there, we have the cloud and any drizzle clearing to the southeast, and then plenty of sunshine. Temperatures up to about 11 degrees Celsius, but reaching that this morning and becoming cooler through the day. Then a clear, cool night, cloudy in the early hours of the morning with lows of 4 degrees and plenty of sunny spells for tomorrow. It should stay dry, but a bit more breezy and chilly with highs of 8 degrees Celsius. Probably some frost Saturday night, and then it becomes much milder and more cloudy from Sunday through till the beginning of next week with some spots of drizzle around. That's your latest forecast. Every weekday morning. You can book your place on the show now. Jonathan Vernon Smith. Come on and get some help, get some assistance. Tackling your consumer problems. I couldn't trace an account in any of the names or any of the addresses that were given. For it to be running for six weeks and then for them to cut it all off again just doesn't make any sense. The JVS show fights for your rights. He came to me and asked if I could go and have a word with said bank. I had an email from the bank to say that you've been in touch with them and the senior customs relations manager was most apologetic. 
pathetic. Thankfully, you managed to get your money back. Yep, but uh, that was due to, obviously, your station itself. The JVS Show, weekdays from nine on BBC Three Counties Radio. Got some, uh, got some bad news, guys. Oh, what, what? The record shop that we are planning to go to doesn't open until 10.30. I'm glad I checked. I forgot that record shop owners are lazy. <laughs> What's the, what's the bad news? Sorry? What's the bad That's news? That's the bad news, guys. We were going to go to Vinyl Revelations. We still can. Straight after the show. I think it was a bad idea, though, to be fair. If we were taking right. Catherine with us, because Sorry? we do get a bit excited oh, in pa- these record pants shops. Come off. Yeah, exactly. We go in there, we smell the vinyl, and our pants come off. And I don't think that's a good idea to be surrounded by the ladies, the ladies. Vinyl Revelations. Come on, guys. Can you not do like um, what Harrods did for Michael Jackson and open up for us <laughs> at half past nine? You know why? They're always in so late, record shop owners, because they're sort of musos, aren't they? Yeah, They've been out doing gigs. 1B Cardigan Street. Look, I'm giving you a plug. Come on, Vinyl Revelations. Open up early for us, like yeah. you would do for Michael Jackson if he were still with us. Come on, Andy. Sorry. Open the shop early. It's just, hard, hard I just time of year. Just, just hit me there. Do you want some texts, anyone? Yes, please. OK. Uh, Dr Watts says, you know what we haven't heard for ages? Yeah. I like the mushy peas well, by David Guest. Well, I'm, I'm sorry, but we, we heard that uh, yesterday, and we heard it today, remember? I like the mushy peas. It's there, you see. Oh, yeah. You just made his Christmas. See you yeah. next let's, Tuesday let's with a little one... gift for all three of you. Let's have it one more time. I like the mushy peas. There you go. <laughs> uh, yeah, by the way, next Tuesday, next Monday and Tuesday, uh, we're getting rid of all the stories. We're just playing records and we're messing around. On Tuesday between six and nine, you're allowed to pop in. Don't pop in for longer than 20 minutes. That'll yeah, be weird. Don't overstay your welcome. We will start shuffling about and getting your coat yeah, for you. But you're allowed to pop in. And Brit, if you've got kids, bring them. If you haven't got kids, don't bring them. Well, Sarah says, are there any slots left? There's no slots. No slots, slots just turn up uh, to come and help you present your show <laughs> and on That's... a minute eee. Catherine do you want to tell her or shall I you can be on it we'll talk to you, you, you you're not presenting you're not touching my knobs alright <laughs> And please... she wanted to bring her 13 year old son down to see how radio works this is the thing that, Kath, uh, that Kelly's really worried about yeah. go on please bring your own refreshments because I can't be bothered to make tea for we everyone we are not making tea or coffee or uh, providing food literally no. nothing like that is happening you turn up you stay for 20 minutes you jog on mm. Merry also... Christmas but if you want to bring <laughs> us tea and refreshments. You're more than welcome. No, I'm not having anything they bring. Um, please, please, if you're coming sealed. in, wash your hands before you come in as well. <laughs> and as you leave. <laughs> Probably as you leave, better. Um, we received a text from school, says Anonymous Texter, after our daughter's Christmas play, asking parents not to post pics on social media oh, yeah. unless we had permission from all parents of the children featured in the photograph. Fair enough. The performance was recorded professionally for us to buy and obviously this DVD could end up being given to relatives or friends, etc. So potentially could be viewed by anyone. No, it's, yeah, but no, it's not the same not, as putting same it online. As it's not the same as putting it on Facebook. Then it's a completely different skillet of fish. Sorry? Skillet of fish? Well, you wouldn't put, put fish in a kettle, would you? Skillet of fish? Yeah. Just? Mm, By the way, they're going back to that Vox, which was great. And you've, you've, I've got to say, Justin, you, all this week you've played an absolute blinder. Oh, the thank serial you. killer's profile was, was, was marvellous. You talking to lunatics throughout the week has just been top notch. <laughs> that fella has never see he's never handed a beggar some money, money, and then yeah. the beggars jumped into his car uh, and driven off. He's no. never seen that and happen. You know, that story was recounted to me by someone when I put it on Twitter that about the mm. horrible uh, old lady who didn't like the big issue person saying uh, Merry Christmas to her, yeah. and she said he said I'd never give that to them because I worried about a beggar who I used to give clothes to and he never wore them. Oh. And so one day after work, I mean it sounds a bit. Like yeah. he lay in wait for him and oh, saw him yeah. getting into a BMW. What the hell? Why is it always a BMW? It's yeah. people's perception. I think uh, that was the interesting thing for me. I, if I see a beggar on the street, as I mentioned to you earlier on, I, I may well give them money, but I certainly wouldn't be thinking to myself, look at what they're wearing. They're going to jump into their sports car. They're all frauds. There's people have got these weird thoughts in their head uh, about what beggars actually represent. Well, and nine some, times out of ten, they're wrong. Yeah, but some might do that. Here's a thought. Don't give them money. Buy him a sandwich. Exactly what that guy said in the middle. He went to a restaurant. Um, he never would give them money because he'll be worried they, again, t- to use a perception, um, would spend that money on drugs. Um, but he saw a beggar outside a restaurant. He was in a fortunate position. He could afford to, to buy that person a burger and he took it outside to them. That was a great thing to do. Although probably not very good for their arteries. No, quite exactly. possibly, yes. It's, it's, it's killing them softly. <laughs> uh, well, Justin. Um, <laughs> Sorry? Um, you're doing the show next Monday, Christmas Eve. Yeah. It's, um, it's an open-door policy. 
What do you mean it's an open door policy? Uh, we're doing an animal special. Bring your animals in what? next oh. Wednesday. This has not been run past me. Yeah. Right. If you've got dogs or cats, bring them in. I haven't got. First of all, that's my idea, but yeah. just made it a little bit worse. <laughs> but the dog or cat can't be interviewed, so they will serve you no purpose. Well, I don't know. I mean, judging from some people on the street, I think a dog might be more interesting to interview. <laughs> jokes. When, when? When are the jokes? Uh, just a joke. Thanks, Just. Cheers. Uh, are you on the radio tomorrow? Are you doing uh, your show tomorrow? Uh, yes, I will be. The day I'm, after uh, the Christmas party? Uh, yeah, don't mention that. Um, yeah, Why? Tw- um, just don't, don't mention that. Don't bring the party into it. Yeah, don't bring the party into it. I'll be sounding very professional tomorrow. Really? Is it, is it pre-recorded? Uh, no, no, it's not. No, no, it's it's going to be live. Um, I don't know how you're going to do it, though, Justin, because um, I heard that you were hosting the after party from the yeah. party tonight. Yeah. You're going you to the gay bar over the road after yeah. the party, yeah. and yeah. then, you're, then you're going to ho- having a party in a hotel room. Yeah. Yeah, very much like Mr. Um, Richard Kelly. What's his name? Robert Kelly. What? R. Kelly. R. Kelly. That's R. the Kelly. Fella. Yeah. Oh, you. But ba- I've got. I've back counted it. I know exactly where we're going with this. Okay. Oh, is this? A, we're going to end on music today. Are we? Yeah, we're going to end oh, on R. Music. Kelly ignition. Oh. Yeah, totally. Oh, now usually you. I don't do this. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> we do it Clever. every Friday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Clever. So anyway, that's the sort of vibe you're going for at your party, isn't it? You and uh, Matt Lockwood. Yeah, it's um, it's a it's a D Lock production um, <laughs> this evening. <laughs> D Lock production. He's such a D Lee and Lockers having an R and B party, and I'm back on air tomorrow, twelve until two, with two hours of great songs, great memories, and some drunk banter. Who fancies a prizzies before we go record shopping? I think that's the only thing we can guys. Do. Um, um, maybe. What now? Did you just say numb? Maybe now. I'm feeling Christmassy. Yeah. The spirit of Christmas is alive inside me. <laughs> and I want to release it. Okay. Yeah, go on. Well, let's give a big shout out to everyone who's going to the Works Christmas Do tonight. Just, you want mm. to introduce this? R. Kelly, yeah? <laughs> no, just Oh, the just enjoy Bed Sarts and Bucks. Come on. <laughs> vibe it up there. Come on, let's do this, R. Now I'm not trying to be rude, but hey, pretty girl, I'm feeling you. The way you do the things you do reminds me of my next is cool. That's why I'm all up in your grill. Trying to get you to a hotel. You must be a football coach. The way you got me playing the field. So, baby, give me that. And let me get that Running her hands through my fro Bouncing on 24 Why they say I'm it up. ready It's the remix to Ignition Hot and fresh out the kitchen Mama ruling that body Got every man in here wishing Sipping on coke and rum I'm like, so what, I'm drunk It's the freaking weekend, baby I'm about to have me some fun Bounce, 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 bounce Bounce, bounce, bounce now it's like murder, she rolled Once I get you out the clothes Privacy's on the door But still they can hear you screaming more Girl, I'm feeling what you're feeling No more hoping and wishing I'm about to take my key and Stick it in the ignition So give me that Let me get that Running her hands through my fro Bouncing on 24 Why they say I'm ready It's the remix to ignition Hot and fresh out the kitchen Mama ruling that body Got every man in here wishing Sipping on coke and rum I'm like, so what, I'm drunk It's the freaking weekend, baby I'm about to have me some fun Crystal popping in the stretch navigator We got food everywhere As if the party was catered We got fellas to my left Honey's on my right We bring them both together We got drooping all night Then after the show It's the after party yeah. And after the party It's the hotel lobby yeah. Around about four You gotta clear the lobby Then yeah. take it to your room And somebody Can I get a can I get a Running her hands through my fro yeah. Bouncing on 24 Come on, why they say I'm ready It's the remix to ignition Hot and fresh out the kitchen Mama ruling that body Got every man in here wishing cool. Sipping on coke and rum I'm like, so what, I'm drunk It's the freaking weekend, baby I'm about to have it some fun It's the remix to ignition on, Hot and fresh out the kitchen yeah. Mama ruling that body Got every man in here wishing Sipping on Coke and rum. Yeah. I'm like, so what? I'm drunk. Uh-huh. It's the freaking weekend, baby. I'm about to have me some fun. Come on. Girl, we off in this jeep. All in windows up. Lost in the radio. In the back of my truck. Bouncing up and down. Stroke it round and round. To the remix. We just plug it out.
Travel news for beds, cards and bugs. BBC Three Counties Radio. On the programme this morning about problems with Thameslink train services, loads of cancellations showing on the departure boards. I can see on the bed for departure boards, the 8.54 to Brighton cancelled, 9.54 and 10.24 to Brighton cancelled. And on the Luton departure boards, uh, 9.08 to Bedford, 9.18 to Brighton, 9.31 to Bedford, 9.52 to Sutton via Wimbledon, the 10.18 to Brighton and the 10.24 to Bedford all cancelled. Now the 10.48 to Brighton uh, as well. There are a few delays showing on there too. M25 still a little bit slow and Anti-clockwise junctions 24 to 23 from Potters Bar to the A1 at South Mims after an accident, but it's starting to ease. A bit of a queue on the A405 each way as you approach junction 21A of the M25. And on the A414, looks slow westbound going into Hartford and on Park Street going into St Albans. Russell Holding, BBC Three Counties Radio. Thank you very much, Russell. New podcast goes up today. If you don't normally listen to the podcast... I thoroughly recommend this one. A, there's some really funny stuff in it. B, we record little links. Well, a very, very special guest recorded the links for the podcast today. Who is it? We'll go and download it and find out. Ta-ta! Local and vocal across beds, hearts and bucks. This is BBC Three Counties Radio. Thank you, Ian. Good morning. Welcome to the JBS Show. I'm Jonathan Vernon-Smith. It's Friday, everyone. It's nine o'clock and on today's big phone-in. Do you think it's good that obese people now have the same rights as the disabled? The European Court has ruled that a man who 